Championship. And we will see that Bartosz Marslik leads the way on 62 World Championship points. 11 in front of Matt's fourth. Then after that, that really is very tight indeed. Wolfenden on 43, but look at this. Lambert 36, Vasilik 35, 35 for Dudek, 35 for Doyle. Mikkel Mickelson on 34. Max Vick right down to Dan Bewley in 12th. It really is very tight. Any one of those riders that can win tonight, pick up 20 points, it's going to transform their Grand Prix series. It is, yeah. It would leapfrog them into the top six. Um, and, you know, for someone like Dan Bewley down in 12th at the moment, uh, that would be huge. You know, young Dan is, is making such good progress. Every round he seems to uh, find his feet. He seems to find a little bit more performance out of the bike. Really is coming good. And above and beyond that, he's riding so well in the extra league. Here he's scoring double figures regularly. Regularly, riding well in Sweden, so the confidence is high. He's a remarkably relaxed uh, young individual in the pits and uh, quite clearly taking everything in his stride. As I say, this is a frustrating delay. Everybody's sort of really G'd up, ready to go. The crowd, the riders, mechanics, and uh, that shower coming through. And uh, it's just put a little bit of a handbrake on the action going ahead. The opening race is actually a really tasty looking heat indeed with Leon Madsen, Ty Wooford and Max Frick and Jason Doyle going off the outside. But um, we will just have to uh, wait a few moments. Bikes are just being pulled back to the pit area because it's still raining pretty hard. And I, I doubt very much that they'll want to ride in that, those sort of conditions. No, the riders won't want to start while the rain is coming down. It makes uh, vision very, very difficult, particularly in the early heats while there's plenty of top surface down on the track all the way down to the bottom. Plenty of top surface down on the track, all the way down to the bottom. Uh, but this crowd will continue to enjoy themselves, listening to the music. And well, it's hot rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About that, it's not cold. They're not getting cold. Let's just take a moment to reflect on Tetero two weeks ago. It was a difficult conditions. One or two of the riders didn't enjoy it, and they dropped out. Obviously, Smarslet capitalised with a, a second place. But Dudek, I mean, Dudek really was out of sorts coming into that. He was quite grumpy, actually, when we saw him in Prague. But that came out of nowhere, and he was probably the least person, the last person. He's, uh, he's uh, quite aggressive on the bike, so, um, you know, you, you, you've got to say that uh, he did very well in those conditions because... Um, it, it wouldn't have suited him, but he was the best rider all day. He wasn't lucky, he just rode fantastically well. Yep, so uh, we are having uh, now it confirmed that there will be a delay. We can just show you some... Uh, so the top three from qualifying this afternoon. So the top three from qualifying this afternoon. And uh, we start with uh, Jason Doyle, I believe, who was uh, there. We're looking at the back of Jason Doyle's bike. Best qualifying of the season, really did look much more impressive, much more like his old self. He got the track at the right moment, there's no questioning that. But uh, for Jason, who has had some embarrassing qualifying this year, this was uh, much more like it from him. Yes, he was very much in, in touch uh, with the top of the qualifying times and he just looked right on the bike. He, he at Some of the qualifying so far this year, he's just looked like he's out riding the bike, doesn't have the speed. Uh, but today he looked comfortable, the bike seemed to be doing exactly what he wanted and even when uh, in the later sessions the track had gone off he was just having a good look around, he was riding across the kerb one moment right around the fence the next and uh, doing everything right. He did indeed and uh, the memory of 2016 that final with Wolfenden really does. He's uh, looking out so there's um, no question that uh, he was superb then. Martin Vasilik put in a strong performance as well. And uh, we have got riders out on track, so uh, it does look like we are going to get on with the action very shortly indeed. And Daniel Bewley there, topping the charts with a 13.944, a stunning lap from him. But we are building up to heat number one, no hesitation. And we have got riders up at tapes already, so it's great that we're getting on with the action straight away. Ty Wolfenden there. Up at tapes, having a look around. It's going to be, vision is going to be a problem here. The spray off the backside, an absolute premium, no doubt about that. We've got Doyle on the outside there doing some gardening. Natural fact, in the draw for this evening's Grand Prix, gate four was a favourite for plenty of the riders. Plenty of grip out there. Leon Matson just settling down. Plenty of grip out there. 
Leon Madsen just settling down on the inside. So heat number one then, on the inside in red is Leon Madsen. Gate two in blue is Ty Wolfenden. Gate three in white is Max Frick. And off the outside in yellow is the former world champion, Jason Doyle. Ordinarily, you'd have to say that gate four in these conditions is the worst possible place to be. But I've got to say that the, uh, the track seems to have soaked the water up on the outside gate. It's, uh, it may work for him, but it's a long way to get across. I think it's actually the partially race. covered there by the grandstand, yes, Chris. Yeah. And the inside is certainly glistening with surface water, but we're settling down now, and the green light is about to come on. And uh, we're going to get on with the action. Start Marshall just wants Jason Dorr to be in the right place. Green light comes on now. Away we go. Terrific start there on the inside. It's uh, Ty Wolfenden makes the best of it. What a move from Jason Doyle. Jumps back to the inside. Stunning move there from the Australian. Fires himself to the front. We've got trouble at the back straight away. You can see the spray coming off the back tyres. Starting really is going to be an absolute premium. But Doyle, what a move in that first corner. Yeah, he was thinking so quick on the way to the corner. He knew exactly what he had to do and he timed it absolutely perfectly. He was actually initially trying to get right across the, the other three riders and he realised uh, quite early on that he wasn't going to do that, so he timed his cutback in between uh, the two riders, Max Frick and Ty Wolfenden, absolutely superbly. Out in front, Jason Doyle, after the stunning move, is looking really good. Wolfenden pushing on. Max Frick, unfortunately, had some sort of mechanical issue right on the opening lap, and that's disappointing for him. Doyle out in front, just needs to hold it all together because Wolfenden is right there trying to put an amount of pressure on him. They're into the last turn. Doyle, who has such a strong record here, out of the last turn. Big three points for him. Opening race is completed, just three finishes. Wolfenden back in second with Leon Madsen hanging on there in third place. But that was all about that stunning move in the first corner, Chris. It really was out of the top drawer. It was out of the top drawer, and uh, he's got a clean race suit. He's come from gate four on a, on a rain-soaked track, so he's going to be feeling very, very good about that result. Terrific stuff then for Jason Doyle. Difficult conditions in the opening race. No hesitation, so he's the winner. Three points for him. Second in uh, the two points is Ty Wolfenden. Third is Leon Madsen. And a one point for him. And Max Frick, unfortunately, just had some sort of issue in the first turn, and the bike gave up the ghost. But for that man, well, the ideal start and difficult conditions. Yeah, keep an eye on Jason Doyle on the outside gate in uh, yellow. You can see there he's got across Max Frick. Then he realises he's not going to go any further. Ty Wolfenden just moves off the kerb, and that gives enough room for Jason Doyle to sneak between him and the concrete. Not a lot of room there, but absolute perfect timing from Jason Doyle. Absolutely superb move. Once he hits the front, no looking back. He's just spraying all that loose, wet dirt over the other riders. And uh, you can see they're all just creeping around the kerb. They want to uh, miss that spray. Very, very difficult to see once that's on your goggles. Yeah, smashing start for the riders are out on track for heat number two, but um, I think that's just a little taster of what we're going to witness here this evening with that sort of manoeuvre in the first corner. If the rain stays away, this track is going to come to the riders. Probably half a dozen races, and after a track rating, all of a sudden I think you'll find that this track could be nigh on perfect. It's not at the moment. You've got to get out in front. You want to keep your goggles clean. You want to pick your way. You've got to get out in front. You want to keep your goggles clean. You want to pick your way. You want to dominate the race if you can. Robert Lambert's been going well. Dan Bewley here as well. And uh, another smashing looking race. And of course, we've got the main man out here as well. The, uh, the name that's on everybody's lips in this part of the world, Bartosz Marslik. Huge expectations. Can he produce? Leads the World Championship, of course, by 11 points. He's in a commanding position as we come to the midway point of the series. And uh, you've got to believe that uh, he will want to get away from gate three in fine style. This is a leveller, there's no question about it when you get conditions like this. Um, home track advantage probably isn't as uh, as good as much as you would think. No, it's not. And Dan Bewley probably uh, probably losing out the most to the rain because he was the quickest in qualifying. He did find the right setup. The track now uh, inevitably is, is a lot slicker, a lot wetter, uh, less traction. So that's a shame. The inside in red is Dan Bewley. Alongside him, the wild card was Nyak in blue. Gate three in white is Bartosz Marslik. And going from the outside this time is Robert Lambert. Can he do something similar to that uh, Jason Doyle did in the first corner? We'll have to wait and see. Bewley so fast earlier on today. Can he utilize that inside gate? Get his nose in front. Here we go then. Heat number two. 
main man out here, smiles lick from gate number three. Possibly not ideal. The tapes are up and we're away. They go charging towards the first turn. And it's Bewley. Bewley hits the front in the first turn. Here comes. Robert Lambert really did hustle that bike through the first turn and comes nicely into second place and the Brits are out in front first and second, terrific stuff from him there's some argy-bargy going on out the back with Bartos Smarslik oh, Smarslik all over the place out the back with Wozniak, how on earth did he stay up there, that really was quite dramatic, now he dive bombs him once again oh. going into turn three Chris, what an opening lap from Smarslik Smarslik was absolutely determined he was coming through there gap or no gap, I think he made the gap in the end and uh, he'll be frustrated with that but it's the two Brits Dan Bewley out front cracking start from him just pinning it around the curb it's exactly where you've got to be right now on this racetrack and uh, Robert Lambert I think coming from gate four again in these early races he'd be quite happy with the second place yeah terrific stuff there but Dan Bewley utilized the inside gate kept his composure and rode superbly well the ideal start for the man that dominated qualifying Made up there, I really don't know. A minor miracle, I would suggest. They really were up there. I really don't know. A minor miracle, I would suggest. They really were going at it. Hammer and tongs there on the first lap and a half. But the race belongs to Dan Bewley, and uh, he wins from uh, a young rider. Dan Bewley, three points. Robert Lambert, second place for him, two. Bartosz Marslik, wow, that was a hard fought third place, wasn't it? And Simon was the wild card, just missing out. And he's got a hole in the middle of his bike where Bartosz Smarslik just drilled past him. Yeah, it wasn't just one go. He had several nibbles at him before he actually managed to do it. But we can see Dan Bewley on the inside just jumps clear, just what he needed to do. Dan Bewley on the inside just jumps clear, just what he needed to do. Doesn't ride across the corner and uh, does everything right. But the battle uh, between Bosniak and Smarslik at the back was unbelievable. One solitary point, but it can make all the difference in a qualification for the semi finals. We can see here now, Ooh. this is the move, I think, when he makes the stick. No, maybe not, but uh, yeah, he does. yeah, he does. As you can see, Wozniak there, he's, he's actually hustled him going harder than he wants to to stop him, and that's where it's all gone wrong for well, Wozniak. You can see he's harder than he wants to to stop him, and that's where it's all gone wrong for well, Wozniak. You can see Smarslik there, covered in shale. Tough opening race there for the championship leader, but really did work hard to get that solitary point. And as you rightly say, Chris, every point is vital. And uh, there's no question he had the hunger there and the fight to come through. Heat number three. And uh, we're up at tapes again. We've got Matze Janowski out here. Injured rider in Mikkel Mickelson. Interesting to see how he goes. A rider in Jack Holder that was impressive early today and looked uh, pretty quick in qualifying, but uh, conditions very, very different now, of course, with that. I do you think it'll take half a dozen races and then the track will come to them? On the inside is Matze Janowski in red. Mickelson is in blue on gate two. Jack Holder in white on gate number three. And off the outside is Pavel Schapelski. And uh, certainly there, a little bit of a discussion going on between Ty Wolfenden and uh, Bartosz Marslik. I'm not quite sure what that was about, but... Uh, I dare say it was about track conditions, but to be honest... quite sure what that was about, but... Uh, I dare say it was about track conditions, but to be honest, you know, we're up, we're running, and uh, the track really isn't that bad. So, heat number three. And Janowski produced on the inside here. We saw Bewley do it in heat number two. Green light comes on. Takes her up. Nicholson's made a good start there. Very good start there from the Danish rider. Hits that first turn. Chapelski's on the outside. Here he comes. He's neck and neck. He gets the better of Holder. No holder there. Neck and neck down the back straight. Chapelski done well there. Done very well. Now Janowski comes through. Can Jack Holder replay the compliment? Yes, he can. He surges back into third place. All a little bit untidy, but they've all stood up. But out in front, can you believe this? Mikkel Mickelson can hardly walk, but he's riding that bike like he stole it. Brilliant the way out of gate number two. And it's dominating heat number three. Fantastic from Mickelson. Looks fast as well, but uh, that riding line at the moment really isn't wide enough for two bikes, but they keep finding a way past each other, drilling holes in each other, giving it absolutely everything out there. Full commitment from Grand Prix stars here this evening. One more lap to go for Mikkel Mickelson, who made a great start from gate number two. He's ridden superbly well. All sorts of questions about whether he was going to be able to ride here this evening. Well, he's just laid those all to the rest, hasn't he? Because he's come up with a fine win in heat number three. Pavel Chapelski doing well, actually, from the outside to come through into second place. All sorts of shenanigans going on in there in third and fourth. And Matze Janowski from the inside, missing out. Not the start he was looking for, that's for sure. But for Mikkel Mickelson, who made two 
finals at the beginning of the series in the first two rounds, all of a sudden looking much more like his old self. As you say, Kelvin, unbelievable. When you watch him trying to uh, walk around the paddock, he's hobbling quite bad. He's got that uh, sore knee, and uh, but a fantastic race. Looked quick. Actually, you know, I, I can't say he looked comfortable, but he did. I'm sure he wasn't feeling comfortable, but he looked uh, fine. Three points for Mickelson then. Chappelski back in second place, two for him. Jack Holder picks up the third pl place, and uh, Matej Janowski, that's a disappointing opening ride for him. Four more opportunities, of course. Track's going to get better, no doubt about that, but we'll see it again. Yeah, unfortunately, Janowski had to get off the gas in the first turn. Mickelson made a great pass, goes across the corner, and he absolutely gets swallowed up by Chappelle's pass, goes across the corner, and he absolutely gets swallowed up by Chappelle on the outside, and Jack Holder up the inside, but... Uh, yeah, it was all going on again for the minor placings. We can see the battle at the back here as Janowski rides straight through that gap. And Jack, uh, he meant <laughs> that, didn't he? He did indeed. He wanted that third place a little bit like Smarzik did in the previous race. But uh, for Mikkel Mickelson, that was an encouraging start for him. No doubt about that. Three points in his opening ride. He'll be delighted, absolutely delighted. That will settle him down. There's no doubt about that. Some work going on bikes uh, there by the pit gate for heat number four and um, uh, it will complete the first block of rides of course and a lot of people talking about martin vasilik he will go from the outside gate he's won here previously he knows how to do it and the uh, rides for star gorgeoff as does anders thompson there are four home riders actually here this evening and uh, a lot of people picking martin vasilik to have a really strong night yeah, and it was interesting in qualifying how the uh, the guys with the local knowledge seem to favour the outside gates in their draw. So uh, well, they weren't expecting rain, and that may have just scuppered it a wee bit for yep. the opening races. But I'm sure, I'm absolutely convinced that this track will improve dramatically as we go through the night. So heat number four, then we've got uh, Anders Thompson on the inside in red. Freddie Lindgren there alongside him in blue, coming out of gate number two. And off gate number three is Patrick Dudek. And off the outside in yellow is Martin Vasilik. And Dudek was terrific two weeks ago. Can he keep that roll going? Can, can that confidence really now roll over into another Grand Prix? Knows what it's all about. World number two, of course, in 2017. Heat number four completes the first block of races. Everybody would have had one ride. Green light is on. Tapes are up and we're away. It's a good start from Thompson on the inside, but look at that from Vasilik. Smashing start from Vasilik on the outside. He's trapped wide, but he just about hangs on to that. Freddie Lingwin now pushing hard with Thompson there, forcing his way through into second place. That was a tough move from the sweep. Can Thompson repay the compliment? He can. Thompson comes charging back up the inside. He's forced Lingwin wide. Now all of a sudden, Dudek's in, in the mix as well, coming through into third place. Another action-packed lap of speedway. <laughs> yeah, you can't afford to uh, leave a hole anywhere because these guys are just riding through it doesn't matter if it's not big enough they'll make it a little bit bigger and we can see uh Freddy Lindgren after having a good opening lap has now just gone backwards to the back Freddy Lindgren after having a good opening lap has now just gone backwards to the back and uh, Martin Vashnik I thought he was going to miss out in the first turn when he just had to go across the corner into the wet stuff but he managed to just keep the bike going forward and now looks pretty quick out front. He's out in front, and we've got dust now appearing on the inside. The rest of the track is soaked, but Martin Vasilik smashing first corner from him. He picks up a win in heat number four. He'll be delighted as well. Great effort from Anders Thompson after all the dramas he's had in the last 10 days. Good ride from him. Patrick Dudek picking up the third place. Freddie Lingwin's going to be thinking, what on earth happened there? I was looking good for a moment, and then suddenly just drifted off the line and got penalised for that. But uh, there's no question, you've got to make your move early if you want to pick up a win here tonight. You have, it's all about the start and the first corner right now. And uh, that man there, Martin Vasilik, uh, he, had, he went across the corner, he got into the slimy stuff. I thought he was going to miss out with a couple of riders being able to get up the inside of him, but uh, sat back on the seat, used the throttle, just back the throttle off a little bit, make the bike find traction. Three points for Martin Vasilik, fine ride from him. Anders Thompson back in second place, two. Patrick Dudek picks up the solitary point, and Frederick Lingren misses out in his opening ride. As I said before this race, a lot of people fancy Martin this evening. Yeah, he's got the local knowledge. He's won a Grand Prix here. As I said, it was on his debut in the GP. He just gets across. Anders Thompson there had to do that, but by this point, he's a little bit wider on the track than he would actually like to be. 
but he makes it work absolutely sublimely and picks up plenty of speed, looks comfortable down on the slick stuff down there. As you say, dust appearing already, <laughs> but that's going to mix in with the, the wetter stuff on the outside. I actually think we're going to get a really good racetrack here. I, I believe so. There's no question about that. Martin Vasilik dominating his opening ride. Chuffed to bits with that. Three points to his name, just calmly reflecting on his first ride. And there's no doubt that uh, he'll be looking forward to his upcoming ride. Looking down on the Edward Yancey Stadium. Just catching our breath a little bit after an interrupted start. The rain coming in, which we're, nobody was expecting. And uh, just throwing a spanner in the works a wee bit, Chris. Yeah, it has. Um, it, it's a shame because uh, it's, it's certainly changed the track. But actually, in the long run, I think it may do us a favour. I think the track will build up a good, strong dirt line later on. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. And I think that um, uh, once the spray goes, well, there's no question that um, uh, there's concern from riders. And um, uh, they're not entirely comfortable with conditions, making their points to the race director, Phil Morris. Be interesting to see if there's any any change here with this this track grade possibly that's going to happen now should happen now but uh, quite clearly um, uh, Ty Wolfenden are not happy with conditions not happy with conditions Amara Castagna there alongside as well the representative from the FIM and uh, not pleased with conditions so we will see what the outcome of these discussions are it's a, a difficult situation because uh, phil morris is the boss here he's got to make the decision but uh, of course he will always have rider safety paramount right let's get some reaction now down in the pits we uh, we've got uh, an interview lined up for you we can hear we can hear from Jason Doyle. He joins Scotty Nichols now. He joins me in here, Jason. The rain come in at the totally wrong time, but what an awesome first turn by yourself. Yeah, it's been a stinker of a day, and then all of a sudden the, the heavens opened. Um, we got thrown in the deep end, really. The, the two minutes gone on in heat one, and we we're out there with a, a track what's pretty much like a, a swimming pool. But I think uh, if we keep riding, the track will come uh, pretty good. Hopefully it dries out a little bit in the next couple of rounds. But... Yeah, it's, it's quite difficult if you don't make the start. Yeah, obviously you're out front, clean set of Kevlar's, it's nice, but obviously were you happy to go out for that first race? Obviously not, mate. I think um, it was a little bit too wet, but this is Grand Prix Speedway and sometimes they think about the cameras before they think about us boys. So I hope uh, they uh, can sort the track a little bit. As you can see over the far right, they're all having a meeting now. So we'll see. we just got to do our job and, and score the points. Well, so you focus on your game, mate. All the best the rest of the night. Thank you. Yeah, well, very honest interview there from Jason Doyle, but um, the green, obviously, the two minutes came on and they were pretty much uh, told they need to get on with it. And uh, we haven't had any crashes, we haven't had any restarts. So from that point of view, can you argue that, Chris, was it dangerous? Was it beyond? Should they have waited? Uh, was it dangerous? No, I don't think so. Um, is it ideal for racing? No, of course not. And I think that's what the riders, you know, they're here to try and win a world championship. Uh, they obviously want the best possible track to do that, so I can understand uh, where they're coming from. I think the discussions may have been uh, as much as anything to do about what to do now, whether or not the track should be graded or just left alone, because sometimes it is best to leave a track like this uh, to sort itself out, at least for maybe eight races. Yeah, yeah, I tend to agree, but there's, there's no doubt that emotions were running high and uh, points were being made, there's no doubt about that. But... Um, uh, we will see what the outcome is. Should be on with the action in uh, fairly shortly for heat number five. Heat number five then, and Dan Bewley is out, a winner, fine wide in his opening ride, making his way round to the start. No track uh, preparation has happened. We've had a small delay, some uh, fairly heated discussions back in the pit area, but uh, to all intents and purposes, nothing's really been done. I think they're just going to leave it and allow it to evolve and improve. I think it will improve. And uh, at some point, this track really is going to come to these riders. So um, uh, although we did see some Fairly forthright comments being thrown around in the pits. 
Um, uh, we're up back at tapes for heat number five and on with the action. We've got uh, two race winners here going head to head in Dan Bewley and Martin Bachelet. Should be quite a battle between those two. Still starting is going to be very important. Still some surface water. So on the inside in red is uh, Martin Bachelet. Gate number two is Leon Madsen in blue. In gate number three, we've got Dan Bewley, who was very impressive in his opening ride. And we see Leon Madsen coming forward to gate number two. And Jack Holder will go from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. So, yeah, two uh, race winners here, Chris, in Martin Vasilik and Dan Bewley. Leon Madsen also in with the mix. Good-looking race now. It is, yeah, and uh, obviously Martin Vasilik having two on the trot. Uh, that is the problem with uh, running in uh, draw number 13. He comes from the inside gate now. He's just one from the outside gate from the other side of the track. Um, but right now in these conditions, I think he'd be quite happy to be uh, on the inside Well, there. you can pick up a second place here. Five points from two rides. You're looking good. You're looking set. A great foundation to work from. He made a really good fist of it initially from the outside. Gate number one for Martin this time. Must have a good opportunity to get himself amongst the big points. Start Marshall calling riders forward. Heat number five about to get underway. Here we go then. Track's still a bit wet, still a bit greasy. Riders, not all riders are happy. But we're on with the action again. We see the light come on and away we go. And they roar to the first corner and it's a superb start from Jack Holder from the outside. How about that from Jack Holder? Terrific earlier on today in qualifying. Martin Vasilik settles nicely into second place. Oh, a bit of a drama going on there out at the back. But there's no doubt that uh, Jack Holder really has made a terrific effort here on the opening lap. Superb stuff from him. Yeah, brilliant stuff from the outside gate, working very hard. A little bit erratic on the bike going into turn three on the first lap, but he seems to have smoothed that out now, and he's picking up plenty of drive, plenty of speed. Dan Bewley just missing out on the first turn. I thought maybe he would have a run up the inside of Martin Vastulik, but uh, Martin just didn't allow that gap to open up. Oh, Jack Holder's in trouble. Oh, so is Dan Bewley. Holder having to hang on. Martin Vasilik now pounces. Oh, what a response from Jack Holder. Very nearly collecting each other as they go into the last lap. Jack Holder now needs to just keep it all together. That uh, turns three and four. Something's developing there. But wow, that really was fireworks on the last lap. Jack Holder coming through in the end, very nearly falling off. He has fallen off after the race. A touch embarrassing for him, but he won't care. Leon Madsen didn't enjoy that one. He was out the back. Dan Bewley in third place. But dramatic scenes coming out of turn four as they enter the last lap. Holder and Martin Vasilik going into turn one for the final lap. How tight was that? Very tight. Very, very tight indeed. Vasilik really had to turn the bike hard to miss Jack Holder. Uh, thought he was going to capitalise on that big mistake from Jack Dan Bewley, making a very, very similar mistake at the same time. So there's obviously something developing down there in turn three. right down there, three points for Holder. What a ride that was. Martin Vasilik solid in second place. Dan Bewley back in third, and Leon Madsen, who really did have a roller coaster of a ride out the back. Can't wait to see this one again. Yeah, it's a job to uh, to call this one. We've got uh, Martin Vasilik. Looks like he's made the start from gate one, but Jack Holder actually coming right across the entire field. It's the first time someone's managed to get right across everybody without running too wide. And uh, it was absolutely fantastic stuff from Jack Holder later on in the race. Yeah, taking a look here at Dan Bewley. Yeah, he's just collected a little rut there, tiniest yeah. little rut in a, in a bad position. And that's really a symptom of everybody riding on the same bit of track because of the wet surface. And uh, we're going to see that happen. And uh, But Jack Holder, yeah, he also uh, found that rut at one point. Ooh, and falls off and, after and down, the race. And down you go. Fortunately, he fell off after the race. A touch embarrassing, but he's forgotten about that now he because he's picked up a valuable three points. And uh, it was a great performance. Looked like he might have thrown it away with Martin Vasilik very nearly getting his nose in front. But great recovery from Jack Holder. That will have settled him down. He's had a strong start to tonight. He's on four points from two rides. Good stuff from him. So heat number six then. Jason Doyle keenly looking on, having to be patient. He's not out until heat number eight. So on the inside in red is Freddie Lindgren. Gate number two in blue is Max Lejanovski. Ty Wolfenden coming out of gate three in white. And Bartosz Smarslik, who really did have to work overtime for his third place in his first ride. He goes from the outside. Big, big line up this. This is a big heat. This could be a final in any GP. Absolutely right. 
Rafael uh, Dubrocki there looking on, the uh, Polish team manager keeping an eye on his his riders here. Freddie Lingram missed out on his first ride, very keen to get amongst the points this time for sure on the inside. Big, big lineup, plenty of experience here, plenty of Grand Prix victories on the start line here for heat number six. Green light comes on now. Away we go. It's an even break. Freddie Lingram's made a good start, but look at Smarsley. Sweeps across from the outside. Gulowski comes through in the second place. Now Freddie Lingram trying to respond. Charges up the inside into turn three. Bars himself into second place. Gulowski responds. Brilliant stuff from Gulowski to come back into second place. Wiffenden's out the back. Now Lingren. Lingren's back up the inside. What a speedway race for second and third. Smarslick's out in front. All the fireworks are going on behind him. Smarslick now putting away out in front. Freddie Lingren riding out of his skin in second place. Yeah, Sensational. The race, the race has settled down now, but Lingren and Janoski just trading places for fun. Smarslick's pretty much checked out, looking reasonably comfortable. And we're starting to see the dirt line actually just beginning to give them a little bit more traction now on the edge of it. Still too deep and wet Janoski. on the outside, but Janoski's not giving up yet. Janoski on the outside in the last corner. Freddie oh. Lingren just straightens up. There's going to be a run to the line. I think so as um, um, Matt Sajanowski, they're all struggling to stay on on the outside. <laughs> you don't on want to be outside. that wide. You do not. What a speedway race that was. Bartosz Marslik, sensational from the outside, swept round his opposition, won in fine style, but the battle for second was just wonderful stuff to witness. And you've got to give Freddie Lickring, you've got to feel for Freddie there. Three points for Bartosz Schmarslik. Matsu Janowski in second place, two for him. Great ride from Janowski. Freddie Lingren relegated to third, and Ty Wolfenden missing out this time. But wow, that was action packed. Yeah, I said that race has settled down, but uh, Janowski had other <laughs> ideas. He hadn't settled down at all. You see now it's uh, Lingren from the inside, Schmarslik just gets across, he gets down low as far as he can, he just uses that dirt line, the very edge of it now he's producing plenty of grip and it's just where you want to be, but look how close this is wow. Lingren just steaming up the inside of Janoski steaming through, doesn't uh, he's not tempted to run across the corner he stays down low on the slicker drier surface, but uh, these guys really going at it for the entire race, and just when I thought Janoski was out of it, that he'd settled uh, for the one point. Oh, no, he's uh, got other ideas. Yeah, they come out of this last corner. Half a mistake from Freddie Lingren, and he pays dearly for that by dropping a point. And for Frederick Lingren, after two rides, he's only got one point. A tough start for the Grand Prix, but uh, Smarslick's put his campaign right back on track here tonight. Wins that race, moves on to four points from two outings. So, wow, let's take a breath. Heat number seven. It's fast and furious stuff, that's for sure. It's got everybody on the edge of their seats. Can't take your eyes off it, people. This really has been an exciting night of speedway. Conditions are certainly playing their part, there's no doubt about that. Inside gate in red is Mikkel Mickelson. Gate two is Anders Thompson in blue. Wozniak in gate three in white. And on the outside, Max Frick, who had a problem in his first ride, so he needs to get himself back amongst the points this time. Gate four certainly worked well for Smarslick. Yeah, gate four does seem to be working better than you would think in these conditions, but uh, as you rightly say, gate four was protected from the rain there just by the grandstand yeah, overhanging. It is, yeah. And uh, so uh, Max Frick will be hoping he's put those gremlins behind it, but that man, Michael Mickelson, he's uh, hobbling around the pits, looking really uncomfortable. Fantastic first ride. It was, it was, and he looked very accomplished. He looked tidy on the bike. Wasn't out looking for points as well. Missed out first time when Smarslick really beat him up for two and a half laps. But anyway, heat number seven. Settling down nicely. Green light is on now. Tapes are up and away we go. Once again, gate number four seems to have worked. No, he hasn't quite got there. Then uh, all of a sudden, Mickelson on the inside. What a first turn. This battling down the back straight there. Brilliant stuff once again. Yeah, but Anders Thompson. Thompson, brilliant round the outside of Miko Mickelson. Got to say, Wozniak now moving through into third place. With Max Frick once again having a disappointing start 
to the Grand Prix, but two injured riders out in front here, the Danish pair, riding really strongly here this evening. All three of the Danish riders have been in the wars in this last week, but uh, all putting 100% effort in, and uh, Anders Thompson, great first lap, jazz to edge out. Mickelson, who was quick in his opening ride, he looks pretty quick in this one too, so he's going to be happy with the start he's made to this Grand Prix. Yeah, Wozniak just running a little bit wide there, but he's got plenty of room there, he's not under threat for third place. Anders Thompson making that move early in the race. He's been kept right up to his work. Mickelson's going to have maybe one more try here in the last corner. Moves off the line, running wider in the dirt. Coming out of the last corner, doesn't quite do it. Anders Thompson hangs on out in front. A Danish 1-2 there in heat number seven. Anders Thompson coming through, of course, rides for Stal Gorgeoff, a very popular man in these parts, that's for sure. Crowd are on their feet, enjoying that one. Max Frick out the back, it's disappointing for him, but uh, there's no doubt you've got to show plenty of bravery out there th tonight, Chris, because if you're not on top of your game, you're going to get penalised, you're going to get pushed back very quickly. Yeah, particularly in the first turn, that's where you've got to be smart, you can't overexpose yourself there. Indeed not, three points for Thompson, Mikkel Mickelson in second, two for him. Wozniak picks up his first point of the night, third place, and Max Frick has failed to score so far from two outings, is under pressure with three rides to come. Now you can see uh, Mickelson, great reaction there from uh, gate one, makes a good clear start, but Anders Thompson is just using the edge of the dirt that now is working, it's dried out enough, and it is giving you that little bit of extra traction than what you're getting around the inside. And we can see now he just starts to pick up that momentum, he's just gathering the pace, he's working the throttle, he's just got that bike working superbly, and manages to squeeze around the outside of Pickle Mickelson as they enter turn three on the first lap. He'll be very happy with that but uh, track settling down we've got sort of three parts to the track now we've got the slick dry bit on the inside where they've, wa they've worn the track away then we've got a, a dirt line that's just dried out enough to work very very well and then of course beyond that you've got a very deep slushy wet bit that uh, <laughs> as we've seen after races very difficult to ride indeed heat number eight then this will complete the second block of races every rider will have completed two rides and uh, Patrick Dudek they're just turning around there it is, heat number eight. We've got Jason Doyle out here, who's had a long wait, actually, since his first ride, so he's had to be very patient indeed. He will go from the inside gate here. He's in red. Gate number two in blue is Robert Lambert. Gate number three in white is Pavel Szapilski, and his compatriot, Patrick Dudek, goes from the outside. Dudek, who, uh, I say again, was uh, absolutely top draw in Tetro two weeks ago. Robert Lambert riding well, a solid second place for him in his opening ride so heat number eight tracks getting better the action is no uh, certainly red hot out there they had that rain coming through at an inopportune moment but uh, this track will come to the riders and we're away superstar Robert Lambert there gets a good start, but Dudek comes charging around the outside. What a first corner from Patrick Dudek. Really has nailed that. Robert Lambert settles in second place. Pavel Schapelski in third. Doyle this time is trapped at the back. But how about that for a first corner from Patrick Dudek? Really worked it brilliantly there, Chris. And I've got to say, that dirt line in the first corner worked a treat for him. Yes, it did. As long as you don't go too far, you've got plenty of traction from that dirt line now. So you've now got decisions to make in the first turn. It's particularly if you're off the inside gates, whether or not to uh, run to the dirt or whether to stray around the inside. And uh, Jason Doyle struggling now. There's uh, Patrick Dudek Ooh. looking quite comfortable now. I'm not sure I'd be having my right Here leg off go. the foot. Doyle's through. Oh, Doyle's through. Yeah, Doyle's through. through in the third place. Dudek's out in front. Lambert settles in second place, but a hard charging right there from Jason Doyle. Got to say there was a mistake there. Oh, once again, Chapelski's all over the place. Klaus the fence and he's down sure he's okay he fell off fairly comfortably well i don't know if you can fall off comfortably <laughs> actually <laughs> he does look that? like he's actually quite knocked about so we keep our fingers crossed that he's okay oh, it was a awkward crash. tough tough race there between jason Doyle. that little rut on the inside caught him out there on a couple of occasions yeah it's not big but it's just in the wrong place it is indeed and i've got to say that jason Doyle was lurking was able to capitalize on the mistake but for that man patrick dudek that win there all of a sudden has transformed his evening. He picks up three points. Robert Lambert steady in second place, two for him. Handy point for Jason Doyle at uh, the late on in the race. And Pavel Szapelski 
failed to score overall after two rides each. Five points for Vasilik Thompson and Mikkel Mikkelsen. Bartosz Smarslik back and four. Jack Holder on four and Dan Bewley on four. But uh, plenty of racing to come and this track is only going to get better. So, after eight heats, um, uh, we've been on the edge of our seats throughout, there's no doubt about this, and this race was no different. No, and you've got decisions to make now in the first turn. It was all about just creeping around the inside, but now, as we can see here, Dudek works very hard from gate four, battles his way across, and then realises that uh, to stop the bike at that point wasn't going to be the fastest way around the corner, so he just heads straight out to the dirt. And you uh, can see Jason Doyle just gets himself pinned right down here by Chappelski. Uh, but of course, as you say, that mistake from Chappelski and Doyle just steams on through. We see it so often in the UK riding for Ipswich. It's a move that Jason likes to make. There's that mistake, last turn, and uh, Chappelski just goes down. So we do have a break now, but um, uh, the information we're receiving is that uh, there won't be any track grading. They're going to allow this surface just to dry a little bit more. Int 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 interesting to see if that proves to be the right decision, but we'll get some more reaction now down in the pits. Let's get down to Scotty Nichols. Yeah, Jack Holder joins me, Jack. So important to make the starts, the conditions like they made a flyer off four and rocket away, but what are the conditions like out there? Yeah, they're definitely um, tricky, but um, you know, it's the same for everyone. Um, yeah, just got to, especially in that, that first round of heats, um, had to be really smart in that first corner. You know, there was a lot of spray water, <laughs> I should say, but um, yeah, you know, everything felt good, as good as it can. Um, made a good one off four and, you know, only made just one mistake. Um, and yeah, I thought I lost it, but held on to it and I lost it after the race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after the race, but that just highlights how tricky the conditions are. Can you just try and explain to viewers how fine that line is? Like you were saying before we chatted that the dirt line is a little bit there, but if you're going it too deep, it just goes like slime, hence why you slid off after the race. Yeah, exactly right. You know, you've got that inside line um, and yeah, that's greasy as well. So um, you sort of you spin on that a little bit and then yeah, you just ride that little cushion and it's not too bad but then yeah as you, as you said you know go a little bit further than that where no one's been and all the wet stuff is you know it's so hard you know i just had no gas and i was rolling and i was gone and then i started going backwards <laughs> come on you got the win though just before we we chatted we saw in the background chapelski come off and hit that little rut going into that third and fourth turn is that a little bit unsettling when you see that knowing how tricky the conditions are if you do you get yourself in trouble yeah exactly right you know um if you're behind, you know, you're going in there and, um, you know, the bike turns really easily. So um, that's not ideal when they turn so hard and you've got to do the same and, you know, it's very close. And if you do hit that rut, you know, there's no really control and, um, yeah, something bad could happen. But, um, yeah, just try and get out the front and, you know, ride my own race. See you, Willie. Make good strides forward. All the best for the rest of the night. Thank you. Jack Holder's looking good. He's on four points and that win really did um, uh, do him a big favour. And uh, it's uh, a terrific um, uh, opening eight races we've witnessed. Difficult conditions, but uh, there's no doubt that we are in for a treat tonight, particularly when this track settles down and it just dries a little bit more. And uh, I'm sure by the time we get to heat 12 and the middle part of the meeting, the racing will be absolutely sensational. So now, waiting for heat number 12, we're in Poland. It's the 3W FIM Speedway GP of Poland. And we've got a packed house here in the Edward Jansa Stadium. Terrific atmosphere and uh, the Poles are delighted because Smarslik won his last time out and he's, he's out again here in heat number nine. We'll do just a little bit of a promotion about the next Grand Prix, of course. We're going to Cardiff in the Principality Stadium once again. Terrific to be going back there since uh, we haven't been there since 2019. All sorts of entertainment going on. We've got legends of the sport coming. We've got race pass race winners coming. It's two for one as well because we've got a SGP2, the second round on the Sunday after the Saturday night. So effectively two Grand Prix for the price of one. So uh, there's no doubt that the Principality will be heaving, I'm sure. Lots of people excited about going back to Wales. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. It's going to be a festival of Speedway weekend. That one's going to be a great weekend. Absolutely right. So we're up at tapes now. Heat number nine, third ride for these riders. Mikkel Mickelson going great guns. Leon Madsen out here as well, looking to after a uh, pretty ragged opening ride for a third place. Looked much more like himself when he won from fine style from the outside gate than his second outing. And uh, he's... Uh, they're doing a bit of gardening on the inside this time, but it's a great effort for Mikkel Mikkelsen. Very disappointing in mine, but it's a great effort for Mikkel Mikkelsen. Very disappointing in Park and Tetero. But so far tonight, he's looking really good. So on the inside is Bartos Smiles looking red. Patrick Dudek going great, coming out of gate number two in blue. Leon Madsen in white, and uh, gate three. And gate four is Mikkel Mikkelsen. And uh, there's no doubt that outside run in the first corner is beginning to produce a lovely dirt line and you can really utilize it yes you can that cushion in between the slick and the slime is now working quite well so uh, you've got to be careful as jack older was just saying in his interview you go too far and then you just lose all of your advantage completely will dry won't it in time you've got to believe that at some point this evening you're going to be able to really go it's going to be heavy as well so it is tricky out there you're going to have to know when the right moment is and uh, patrick dudek about 182 beats per minute there he's certainly got the adrenaline pumping through his veins after that last ride where he was out in front really did look very good indeed so here we go then heat number nine all eyes at the moment from most of the crowd are on the rider on the inside tapes up there we go Nicholson's made a great start from the outside, but it's been pushed wide. Look at that forceful move from Bartel Smarslik around the inside. Dudek into second place. Madsen hanging on for third, but Dudek was there. I thought for a moment Dudek was going to get the better of Smarslik, but Smarslik had other ideas. He's run wide there. A little bit untidy as he completed the first lap. Hugging the inside through turns one and two. Dudek's really there on the pace, showing great speed, but Smarslik is going to be a tough, tough move now to beat him from there. Smarslik now looking over his shoulder. Beginning to pull away. Great ride from the championship leader. Smarslik only knows one way. That's flat out. All action style of his now. Just settling down, pulling away. Did think that Patrick Dudek had the speed on the first lap. But yeah. uh, unfortunately for Mickelson, he really did miss out after making actually probably the best start um, of the four riders. But he just didn't quite get across. Into the last corner then. Smarslik's winning at the canter here. Under pressure early from Dudek. But the crowd are on their feet. They're loving that. Back-to-back -back wins for the championship leader. Moving on to seven points from three outings. All of a sudden, normality is restored. And uh, the crowd favourite is producing some stunning riding. Good ride from Dudek back in second place. Handy two points for him. Nicholson will be frustrated with that. Looked like he'd made it for a moment from the outside. Just missed out in the first corner. That man was ruthless in the first corner. Made that first corner his. Picked up a great win. Yeah, he would have seen uh, Mikkel Mickelson trying to get across, but he just uh, fully committed to that turn. Three points for Bartosz Marslik then. Patrick Dudek back in second place, two for him. Leon Madsen in third, one point, and Mickelson misses out this time. Disappointing first ride for Smarslik, but two wins since then. We can see here, Mickelson just looks like he's going to get across, but then Dudek, uh, he just finds as he's coming across to the to the inside, he just gets uh, loses his traction, and Dudek's there. And at this point, it looks like Dudek's going to have the speed to cut back and uh, get back up the inside of Smarslik, but Smarslik's so brave in these conditions to use that little bit of dirt that's just built up on the bottom of the fence to shoot his way into the corner. It gives him that extra speed entering the corner, gets himself in front of Dudek, and uh, pretty plain sailing from there. It was indeed, and um, uh, Bartos Smarslik is looking set for the semi-finals already on seven points, leading the way. Dudek's going nicely with six as well. He's having a good Grand Prix, building on the confidence from two weeks ago with that uh, win in Tetro. So heat number 10 here, and Ty Wolfenden's out. Wolfenden needs points, even at this early stage. He's on two points from two outings. He's got the gate four. We've seen him bounce back before. He's going to have to do it here. Tough race, though. Dan Bewley's going well. Anders Thompson was a winner last time as well. So far from easy. Grand Prix Speedway really is pressurised. There's no easy races out there, that's for sure. Chapelski on the inside in red. Bewley in blue. 
out of gate number two. Anders Thompson out of gate three in white. And Ty Wolfenden from the outside in yellow. Big race for Wolfenden here. Massive race for Wolfenden. And we were just looking at that overhead shot. And it does look like the run from gate four has gone quite slick. And we heard Jack Holder saying that the, uh, the inside has, has now gone a little bit greasy. So I think that's why we're seeing the riders struggling now to, uh, to get across. But if anyone can do it, Ty Wolfenden can. We'll wait and see what he can produce. He often does something special from the outside. Here we go, the tape's up. He's made a great start, comes across. What a start from Wolfenden. That's textbook. Absolutely out of the top draw there from Wolfenden. Disappointing last time. Wow, what a start that is. Bewley comes roaring around the outside. Chapelski's there in third place. Bewley's Keep your eyes on Bewley. Keep your eyes on Bewley. He's flying in second place. Wolfenden now coming back to the mid-track, trying to find some free grip, trying to find some speed, but Bewley is certainly threatening in second place. Runs in deep into turns three and four, roaring around the outside. There's no question Wolfenden's vulnerable. Bewley pushing on. Oh, Bewley hits the front. What a ride from Dan Bewley, Chris. Oh, that was absolutely superb. He looked like he had the speed to charge through on the inside on the previous lap. Back down to that one. I think it was probably the right move. He didn't panic. He knew he had the speed. He just had to wait for a clear opportunity. And the minute Ty left that gap on the outside, Dan Bewley carrying so much speed and riding so smoothly. Into the last corner. Dan Bewley riding out of his skin there. What a pass that was. Superb start after a su superb start from Ty Wuffenden. It looked like from there he was going to be a winner all night long, but uh, Dan Bewley had other ideas. Swept around the outside. Silky smooth ride from Dan Bewley. Two Brits congratulate, congratulating each other on the back straight. Well, a lot of people fancying Dan Bewley here this evening on rides like that. Seven points to his name after three rides. Tell you what, that was very impressive. Dan Bewley, three points. Ty Wuffenden back in second, two for him. Chapelski picks up a point. Thompson this time missing out. Wow, winning a race and lasting a race. Tough out there tonight, Chris. It is tough out there. Conditions, as you said earlier, are a leveller, but they are settling down. And we can see from the start, it looks like Dan Bewley's actually made a good start, but he just gets squeezed out as they get to the corner. Ty Wuffenden uh, pulling clear. Chapelski on the inside. But Dan Bewley, a really accomplished ride. He just had to deal with Chapelski to start with. Then he chases down uh, Ty Wolford and looks like he can make a move up the inside. Backs out of that one, doesn't panic, knows he's got the speed. Look at his body language as he uses the dirt line there. He's actually got the bike driving into the corner. It was absolutely fantastic ride. Superb ride from Dan Bewley. Out of the top draw there, there's no doubt about that. Had the speed, had the confidence, had it all going on. And quite clearly delighted with that. Why wouldn't you be? Oh, well, you would be. That, so to pass a three-time world champion in a Grand Prix is no easy feat. And he did it in some style. So we're moving on again here, heat number 11. And the uh, track's getting better. No rain in the air. That's fingers crossed. It stays away and conditions can continue to improve. Racing's great. Enjoying this, thoroughly enjoying it, that's for sure. Every race is a thriller. That's uh, got on the edge of our feet. Freddie Lingwin on the outside there. Couldn't believe what happened to him last time. Chris Holder here, keenly looking on. Jack Holder, his brother, is out here. Going well, Jack. Very well, yeah. Looking good. Robert Lambert's having a steady night as well. Wants to get his nose in front, I would think, very soon, if he can. So on the inside in red is uh, Robert Lambert. Gate number two is Jack Holder in blue. Max Frick coming out of gate number three in white. Needs points. And Freddie Lingwin also needs points. Just got one point to his name so far. So um, uh, riders already under immense pressure here in Frick and Freddie Lingwin. They are desperate for three points right now. Yeah, this is the point in the meeting when you can start to, uh, if you can put in a good race, you can just take a little bit of pressure off yourself. You can indeed. Robert Lambert settling down, eager to get on with the action. Jack Holder also coming in, beginning to find his confidence, beginning to find his feet in Grand Prix Speedway. Green light is on, tapes are up and away we go. Good start from Lambert. Gotta say that's a smashing start on the inside. It goes through to the outside. Look at that from Freddie Lingwood. Lingwood. Read that, but what a recovery that was from um, uh, Robert Lambert. Really did power on down the back straight. Got his nose in front, got himself on the dirt line and completes the first lap out in front. Max Frick this time is in the points with Jack Holder out the back, but Robert Lambert is gonna have to wind it on out in front because Freddie Lingwood will not give up in second place. Yeah, when you said Robert Lambert just needed a little bit of fresh air to get himself sorted out, well, he's got that. 
now, and he's just easing away from Freddie Lindgren. He's not pulling away. Oh, oh. Freddie just using the ruts there. He's just made about three yards up in one corner. Fantastic from him. And Here we really go. Inside, he's got that bike hooking up. Oh, and this he is hasn't tight. Quite got the traction, but Robert Lambert, his eyes in the back of his head. Here. Freddie Lindgren ran the outside, powering on, on. coming on down the back straight. What a move from Freddie Lindgren. Robert Lambert then just oh. Once again, oh, Lindgren's gone down as well after the start. Oh, what a speedway race once again. Freddie Lindgren won there, <laughs> but then has the embarrassment of not being able to stay up so slippery on the outside there. But what a ride from Freddie Lindgren there. That move around the outside on the last lap down the back straight. Brilliant stuff from him on the edge of the dirt. Robert Lambert possibly rode a little bit too conservatively yes. there. Yeah. Freddie Lingren, three points for him. Robert Lambert back in second place. Consistent tonight, Lambert. Max Frick amongst the points for the first time and Holder missing out. But once again, this speedway here in the Edward Yance Stadium is absolutely top draw stuff. We're loving it. Yeah, Robert Lambert had his chance, got his fresh air, but he didn't make the most of it. I think you're right, Kelvin. I think he rode just a little bit conservative. I think he was a little bit concerned about making a mistake. Absolutely fantastic start. Clean air from there. Goes to the outside. Looks like Lindgren's going to be able to make the cutback work. Uh, doesn't do so. And it looks like uh, on lap two that Robert Lambert's just edging away. But Freddie Lindgren putting all the pressure on Lambert just forces him out into the dirt. And uh, now he gets defensive. Now he goes to the inside. That was his mistake. As soon as Freddie Lindgren realised that he'd got the pressure on him, he's just able to squeeze around the outside. Tight move, great racing. And I uh, can just see there, he's just making the bike work. Lambert thinks he's got oh. the job done, but he has to turn. Because oh. Freddie Lindgren is not getting off the gas. No, he was not. He was there. He was a tiger behind Robert Lambert there. Needed that. Freddie Lindgren really did need that. He'd had a tough start to the night, but three points there. Moving on to four gives him a chance of a semi-final spot. Great speedway race once again. This crowd really are enjoying themselves here this evening. It's a really clammy, hot night, but uh, the speedway really is red hot out there, that's for sure. No quarter being asked. Everybody giving 100% tough to be consistent. Robert Lambert's had three second places. On the inside is Martin Vasilik in red. Jason Doyle out of gate number two in blue. Gate number three in white is uh, Max Ayanovsky. And off the outside the wild card, Simon Wozniak. Stahl Gorjov rider looking for some points here from the outside. They are now receiving news about Chapelski. He's hurt his thumb on his hand, but uh, it's not going to stop him riding tonight, which is great news. So Jason Doyle, who had a hard-fought third place last time after a stunning ride in his opening ride, he'll be looking to build on that now, but Vasilik alongside him on the inside gate. Uh, he won't be an easy man to beat, that's for sure. Here we go. Heat number 12, and we're away. Martin Vasilik has made a stunning start from the inside. Hits that first corner, drives up the banking, hits the dirt. Brilliant stuff for Martin Vasilik, pulling away out in front. Doyle now stamps his authority in second place with Janowski on the inside with Wozniak out the back. But Martin Vasilik really riding fast here. What a start, what a first corner. Martin Vasilik, wow, he's going great guns in front. Yeah, Vasilik looking great up front. And Jason Doyle really having to work hard. He's now just chosen to uh, get his bike right in the dirt there. Seems to be the fastest place, but you're always concerned. It's a long way round. Someone like Janoski, who is absolutely desperate to add to his two points, uh, just can't make it stick. Here we go. They're running wider and wider now. Doyle just having a sneaky look over his shoulder to see where Janoski is. Martin Vasilik is comfortable out in front. Doyle's a bit untidy in second place. A bit ragged coming out of turn two on the last lap. Far from ragged out in front is Martin Vasilik. A textbook ride from him. Picks up another race win. Home crowd delighted with that. Of course, he's a fan favourite here. He's won Grand Prix here in the past. Punches the air there. Clearly delighted to have ridden so well there. Couldn't do much more. Great start from the inside. Four perfect laps. Plenty of speed. That's what it's all about. Yeah, he's dropped just the one point tonight. Looks very accomplished. Looks very happy out in those conditions. Seems to have the bike working very, very comfortably for him. 
Great stuff for Martin Vasilik. He wins three points. Jason Doyle in second place, two points for him. Matze Janowski back in third, one point. Not going good for Janowski, needs more. Simon Wozniak out the back, the wild card, just been beaten up that time. But Martin Vasilik leading the way, eight points out of nine. Great effort so far. Bewley on seven, Smarslik on seven. Patrick Dudek on six, Doyle on six, Robert Lambert on six. So tight there, isn't it, with Anders Thompson and Mikko Mikkelsen also on five. Terrific Grand Prix, plenty of speedway to come. Yeah, Martin Vasilik happy with his performance so far. We can see here he comes off gate one in red. He's got his body weight all over the handlebars, got the bike pulling like a steam train, and it does a perfect job. Gets him straight to the dirt line. You can see the riders now choosing to use that in the first turn, and it's definitely working. Jason Doyle just getting a little bit sideways. Then he grabs a bit of traction, has to go out to the dirt, and uh, hung on to second place, but it wasn't easy for him. Uh, but that man there, comfortably out front. <laughs> He was indeed, and uh, he's looking good. He's just dropped the one point, and he's in uh, fine form this evening. And um, uh, after winning in Prague, this is a great, this is a great performance from Martin Vasilev. Let's get some more reaction now. We've got Dan Bewley with Scotty Nichols for us. Yeah, Dan Bewley joins us. Dan, fastest man in qualifying practice, and you showed it in your last race there. Yeah, you know, practice was good, but um, it doesn't mean a lot once the meeting starts. But uh, had two wins now and, uh, you know, keep moving forward. How different is the track from practice now? Have you had to make many changes? Um, not really, to be honest, just left everything the same. But, um, you know, the track is a lot different, especially uh, on the inside line. It's actually, you know, it's, it's pretty good. But, um, you know, if you just get the spray, especially if you're behind, it's hard to see. And uh, it's, it's very greasy on the outside. But... Um, I think the track's coming too, and they're having a little grade now. And you know, I think the racing's getting better, and uh, the next few heats should be really good. Yeah, I think the track will definitely get better as the night goes on. We know how passionate the Polish fans are. The atmosphere is awesome here. How are you going to feel when you do the same thing in Cardiff? Yeah, I don't know. It's a long way away, but uh, we're going to keep focusing on tonight. But uh, it already felt pretty special, you know, just racing with Ty in that last race. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's won goals off three or four times, if I've got that right. And uh, it's pretty special around here. And to battle with him, that's pretty cool. It's the first first real race we've had together. But uh, now I look forward to Cardiff, but uh, we've got a lot of racing in between. Well, I'm impressed you threw some stats in there. You're not really much of a thinker, man. Um, you drew draw five from the qualifying practice, but do you feel that with the rain, it's kind of leveled the gate positions out now? Yeah, you know, I don't. I thought gate one in my first race, it was it was like being in a lake, but um, I made a pretty decent one. And then uh, the middle two gates, I don't think it's very good, but gate four is really good. Um, but you know, that's the look of a draw, and uh, you got to be prepared for anything. But um, no, I'm pretty happy with with what we chose, and uh, you know, I look forward to the rest of the night. Good luck, good luck for the rest of the night, mate. Thank you. Yeah, good to hear from Dan Bewley, smashing interview there. He's got gate four actually in his next ride. So he comes out in heat 15 and he's up against Dudek, Frick and Janowski. So every chance there that uh, Dan will be able to add to his total and make his way through to the semi-finals. You know, Cardiff is the next Grand Prix and of course it would be great to see a British winner there. And Dan Bewley in the form he's in. I'm sure he's going to put up a fine show for us all. That's uh, no doubt about that. Look at that stadium, Chris. It's such a great shot, that isn't it? That overhead shot of the Edward Yance Stadium. Yeah, great shot, great crowd, passionate crowd about their speedway. Just going back to Dan Bueller, I hope he's able to keep that relaxed demeanour that he's got uh, going into Cardiff because, you know, Cardiff is a pressure cooker atmosphere. <laughs> So we are just having a grading break now. The uh, the tractors are out. There is a generally after heat 12 a slightly longer pause. So it gives everybody just an opportunity to get some refreshments and take a breath, and uh, also for ourselves as well because it's been fast and furious so far. And uh, Jason Doyle having a solid Grand Prix. There's no doubt about that. He sits handily on six points after three outings. So looking good for a semi-final spot. And as I say, in 2020, he made the final on both nights. It was a double header. And uh, he'll be looking to uh, do the very similar sort of effort here this evening. Martin Vasilik uh, parked alongside him, going great guns as well, leading the Grand Prix. But it's been, uh, it's been pretty uh, 
pretty red hot, all the same. But let's get down to the pits with uh, Scotty Nichols and Ty Wolferton. Yeah, Ty Wolferton joins me now. Ty, obviously, um, a few of the boys, yourself included, weren't happy to start the meeting. You just tell us a little bit about what the conversation would involve with Phil. Uh, we just wanted him to scratch the track because the water was just sat on top and it was like little puddles everywhere um, and dry underneath because the water, Bartek says the water just stays on top. So we asked him to scratch it and he refused and said, go out. Is what it is. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? But the track seems to be settling down a little bit now. There's a rut appearing and that turns three and four. But how do you feel the? How do you feel out on the track right now? Yeah, all right. Made a pretty good start from four. Um, gate three is gate three, uh, especially here. Um, yeah, start from gate four was pretty good. I uh, just rode a little bit conservative on the inside. I did the first corner and went up and touched the dirt and the wheel was spinning through. It felt quite sloppy. So Sorry, did you feel you rode a bit conservative because of the stuff you were seeing on the monitors in between the races? No, nah, just when I went, like, when I rode from the start and then I drifted up to the dirt and it spun through it like slushy stuff. So I didn't get any traction. So I thought, all right, I'll peel to the inside, try catch a few ruts and get some speed around there. But then when Dan passed me, I followed him the next lap and realised that the bottom corner wasn't slushy, actually had some pull in it. So, uh, yeah, one corner felt slushy and one corner was good, but is what it is. Well, you know, for next time, it's amazing how many thoughts you have in a race, but keep that mind focused. Good luck for us tonight. Of course, thank you. Yeah, smashing. Good to hear from Ty. He's on four points, so there's no doubt that uh, he needs to push on, but he's got time to turn it around, that's for sure. See some highlights now. of what we've witnessed so far. Yes, it has been uh, very exciting indeed. And uh, we're on with the action once again after a bit of track grading. Not that much, actually. We normally see a little bit more, but uh, clearly being a little bit conservative with the conditions. They don't want to spoil it. They're letting it dry as naturally as possible. I, I think the organisers have made all the correct decisions as far as the track's gone tonight. Leaving it, I think, was the right thing to do. Uh, the grading they've just done, they've done a lot of focus, a lot of grading on the inside, trying to take out some of those ruts. Um, and just get the spikes in, just to, to take the uh, slipperiness and greasiness off that inside surface. And um, yeah, I, I think we're gradually getting a very good racetrack. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure that uh, it will just keep improving all throughout the night. Heat number 13 here, and all four riders are needing points, that's for sure. And um, uh, they are going to have to produce something now if they want to make the semi-finals. We've got Freddie Lingwin here. Leon Madsen, who's been very consistent in the Grand Prix series up to this point, has had a difficult night. He's just sitting on two points, so needs a win here, that's for sure. So uh, can he produce something? He's in the wars. Anders Thompson there, his compatriot there, just sitting calmly waiting for his next ride. So here we are, heat 13, then on the inside in red is Simon Wisniak. Pavel Chapelski out of gate number two. Gate number three in white is Freddie Lingwin, and Leon Madsen will go from the outside in yellow. This is a big race for Madsen. He's right there in the championship chase, and he needs to keep it going. He needs to try and turn his night around. He's found it tough for points so far this evening, just two. If he can move on to five after four, then he'll give himself a chance, maybe with eight points, a win in his last one to make the semis. But uh, pressure is well and truly on. There we see uh, Wozniak also finding points hard to come by, just one point to his name so far, Chris. Yeah, he has found uh, conditions maybe not suiting him, um, but uh, Freddie Lindgren, four points at the moment. He really needs points in this one. He's been in the thick of the action every time. He has indeed. Pressure race then. All riders need points desperately. Green light's about to come on. Heat 13. Start Marshall just making sure that he's satisfied. He's happy now. Referee's on, and away they go. So really close first corner there. Leon Madsen coming from the outside there. That's a good effort from him. He needed a win and he's responded. He's hit the front and the back straight. Freddie Lingwin is out of the picture here. He's going to have to work awfully hard to get amongst the points this time with Pavel Schapelski in third place. 
Simon Wozniak there in second place, going really nicely. But out in front, Leon Madsen, just two points prior to this race. This is more like it from him. Gate four works a treat, looking fast in front. Yeah, as you say, looking fast in front. And uh, I'm just watching Freddie Lindgren trying at the back. He looks like he's got quite a, a wacky setup on the bike. It's working very hard. I think actually now he's, he's breaking down, so maybe he's just got a bike problem. But uh, Leon Madsen, Looking good out front, he'll be happy with this. He's very uncomfortable today uh, with that uh, whiplash injury he's got to his neck. But uh, he'll be happy with three points He's here. out in front, he's through the last corner. Freddie Lingwin suffering all sorts of problems, desperate for him, but Madsen, does that give him a lifeline? Five points from four rides, one to come. One more qualifier to come. Could he sneak through? That's more like it for Madsen. Showed great character there after three really tough outings. Freddie Lingren clearly despondent there, just cruising around, finishing the race. But for Leon Madsen, as I say, five points from four. He will probably need to win his last ride, that's for sure. But the Danish guy, Danish rider, who had a crash in the Danish championship, and uh, he wins there, uh, three points for him. Wozniak back in second place, two. Pavel Chapelski, third one, and Freddie Lingren, that's, that was not the thing he was looking for there, Chris, at that's all. Disaster for Freddie, really needed points there to uh, give himself a decent chance of a semi-final spot. But uh, Leon Madsen works extraordinarily hard to get across there from gate four, just runs, then goes to the edge of the dirt, the track working nicely after the track grade. Looks like the outside actually has dried out quite a bit during that track grade. They're just uh, taking a little bit of the depth out of it, and uh, the outside seems to be working better since that track grade. So I think now the track's really going to come to the guys. And Leon Madsen, once he got himself clear, was very, very comfortable. Two points as well for Simon Wozniak after a tough start to the evening for him. Yeah, good ride from uh, Leon Madsen in front. As I say, maybe a lifeline there with uh, a ride to come. He'll be coming out in uh, heat number 17 for his last ride from the inside gate, but uh, we've got three races to go before that. So we've got Ty Woofenden here, and this is uh, another big ride for Ty. He's uh, only got four points, so really does need to uh, get going here. A win would be very handy indeed. He's found it difficult. Dan Bewley just found the right part of the track last time to actually just get the better of him. So, uh, heat 14 on the inside in red is Ty Woofenden. Now, the gate number two in blue is Martin Vasilik. Gate number three is Robert Lambert, very consistent tonight. And off the outside in yellow is Mikkel Mickelson. But Martin Vasilik, he's the danger man here. Eight points out of nine, Chris. He's really going great. And he's, he's really making some sensational starts. Starts and first turns, yeah, absolutely perfect. Uh, Robert Lambert. As you say, consistent. Three second places. I'm sure he'd love a win here. Yeah, he had his nose in front momentarily last time, yeah. but just got out battled. Possibly a little conservative on the last lap, but six points from three outings. Still in a good position, that's for sure. Two rides to come. Needs to keep it rolling now. Tough race here. Wuffenden on the inside. Can he produce something special? Away they go. Tapes are up. Wuffenden's got there alongside Martin Vasilik. Vasilik now gets his nose in front. Look at Mickelson. Mickelson, what a move from Mickelson. Absolutely charges through there. Meeting the sandwich. Hits the first turn. And he's gone. Martin Vasilik back. Wow, what a ride for Martin Vasilik. Brilliant stuff from him. Is there anything Mickelson can do about that? That was a stunning opening lap of Speedway. Wuffenden, Wuffenden's gone to the back with Robert Lambert now coming through into third place, but Martin Vasilik out in front, riding out of his skin once again. Oh, it's all happening here. Robert Lambert just changed his mind late on down the straight. He's got plenty of speed. He will know that Mikkel Mickelson's not 100% fit if he can put pressure on him. Uh, but Mickelson, with his injury, is doing fantastically well. But that man out front... Oh, Robert Lambert out of shape there, but Martin Vasilik's got it all sewn up out in front. Strong ride for Mikkel Mickelson. Thought for a moment that move on the first lap was going to seal a win, but Martin Vasilik has other ideas. Moves on to 11 points from 12. Dominating the Grand Prix so far, Martin Vasilik. Home rider, delights the crowd once again. Desperate for Wuffenden out the back. And a semi-final place for him is looking a long shot now. 
Mikkel Mickelson, even with that badly damaged knee, riding very well indeed, but Martin Vasilik, rider of the night so far, really looking good, responded brilliantly there, looked like Mickelson had that, but he showed great determination to come powering back up the inside. How much speed did Mickelson have down that back straight? Just got it hooked up brilliantly coming brilliantly. through that first corner. Three points for Vasilik, stunning. Mikkel Mickelson back in second place, two for him, Lambert third, and Wolfen missing out. Good speedway race once again here. Yeah, great speedway race, great start from uh, Mickelson. He's just given himself this chance here now. Just makes a run right through the gap there with Ty Wolfen and Vasilik. And uh, he, uh, I can't believe how much speed he generated on the edge of the dirt. I uh, can see it once again now. It looks like Ty Wolfen has made a decent start, but he just runs across the track. There, I've, I think that was the uh, what made it look even more impressive for Mickelson was the fact that uh, Vasilik just lifted and lost his forward momentum. And then uh, Vasilik taking no prisoners, steams up the inside of Mikkel Mickelson and just goes away. Great stuff from him. Robert Lambert, in the meantime, just looking to the outside of Ty Wolfen once again. We're seeing Ty just rounded up round the outside. Seems to be riding just a little bit conservatively. Hasn't quite got the setup. Hasn't quite got the speed tonight. But for that man, he's got the setup. He's got the speed. He's leading away from the front. He's only dropped one point so far this evening. Great effort from Vashley. Looking good tonight. So we're back at tapes again. Heat number 15. And you see Dan Bewley here going from the outside. Matze Janowski is desperate for points. It's been a disappointing night for Janowski. He's only got three. He needs a win. If he wants to make the semi-finals, probably going to need two wins. A win and a second at the very least. Otherwise, his Grand Prix is going to be over. So, here we go then. Heat 15 on the inside is Patrick Dudek in red. Max Frick alongside him in blue in gate two. Gate number three in white is Matze Janowski. And Dan Bewley flying this evening. Looking good. Goes from the outside in yellow. Janoski's under a lot of pressure here. Absolutely desperate for three points. He's got to do it. His World Championship chase is faltering a little bit here. Didn't go to plan in Tetero. It's been a tough night so far this evening. Such a talented rider. Uh, a win could turn his fortunes around, though. Such an elegant rider. Has speed. When he gets it all together, he really is an eye-catching rider. Max Frick has had a tough time this evening. That man, though, in fine form, Bewley. Rode here last weekend, actually, for Wrocław in the Extra League, so this place is fresh in his mind. Takes uh, are up, heat number 15, and we're away. Bewley's made a good start from the outside. Oh, Dudek's Bewley. just were there. Bewley. Dudek, Dudek there on the middle of the track. Bewley's gone too wide. He's yep. got beaten up down the back straight. Janowski's is coming through there. Bewley once again, really railing it round in the dirt in turn three and four. Wow, how did Bewley do that? He had to hang on to his motorbike big time there. But Dudek has responded. He charges down the back straight, stretching away out in front. Janowski back in third place. That's not enough. Oh, Bewley almost running in the back of Dudek. Wow, that's exciting stuff down in turns three and four. Dudek hanging on out in front and Bewley pushing awfully hard in second place. The roost from the back of Dudek's bike nearly knocked Dan off his bike there. He was running up, making so much, generating so much speed. He has got the faster motorbike. I think he is riding a little faster than Dudek, but he just can't find that opening. Now, Dudek's in the right place, that's for sure, on the edge of the dirt. Stunning move on the opening lap. Bewley's been the entertainer back in second place, but Patrick Dudek! All of a sudden, he's in the thick of the action now. What a ride from Patrick Dudek. Moving on to nine points. That's a great effort from him. Look for a moment that uh, Bewley was going to do it from the outside, but Patrick Dudek just got himself in the right place coming out of the first corner. Bewley just running a little bit too wide. Maybe it's a bit slushy out there, got a little untidy. But that's Patrick Dudek at his best there. It certainly was. I was actually convinced in that first turn that uh, Dan Bewley had done everything right, but uh, just went a little bit too far on the track. Three points for Patrick Dudek then. Dan Bewley back in second place, two for him. Handy two points for uh, Dan Bewley. Matze Janowski, that's not enough. Disappointing Grand Prix for Matze Janowski. And Max Great. Frick uh, misses out this time. Great start from Dudek on the inside. Works all the way to the corner. Has to run in quite hot and straight line it. And that's when Dan Bewley just goes a little bit too far. Janowski with a great run up the inside. Uh, looks like he's going to get himself ahead of Bewley, but you can see Bewley just sitting back on the bike, trying to generate as much traction into the corner as he possibly can while chasing down Dudek. Uh, but a masterclass from Dudek. He knew exactly where to ride. Every move that Dan Bewley made, even though he had 
slightly more speed than Dudek, just wasn't able to make it stick. Look at this stuff, yeah, beauty. Brilliant stuff. I mean, look, right. here, he nearly gets knocked off the back of the bike with that roost. Yeah, that, that, um, uh, the dirt hitting his lead there slowed him up. Great ride from Patrick Dudek. They'll be pleased with that. As I say, he's now looking very strong on nine points, lying second in the Grand Prix at this stage. And uh, probably almost certainly through to the semi-finals. So, heat number 16. The Trider will have completed four rides. We've got Anders Thompson there on the outside. Hans Nielsen, the Danish team manager, four-time world champion, of course, keeping an eye on his charges. Be pleased with Madsen last time, but he'll be keen for Thompson to do well here. On the inside is Jack Holder in red. Bartos Marslik, gate two in blue. Gate three is Jason Doyle in white. And Thompson going from the outside in yellow. Cool. This is going to be a good race. Competitive race, it's fair to say. Every single one of them needs points. This is a very, very big race. It is. Smarslik's been uh, dynamite in his last two outings, winning back-to-back -back heats after a tough opening gambit with third place. Doyle is looking solid as well. Something's going to give here. Gate number two for Smarslik. Can he make it work? Gate one's been working well recently. Here we go then. Jack Holder makes a great start on the inside. Super stuff from him. It's tight going into the first corner. Red lights are on. Yeah, Jason Doyle moved at the start. Be a warning for Hull and uh, Doyle then. Alexander Leotosinski from Ukraine is the referee. Puts the red lights on fairly quickly there with Doyle just rolling. And uh, Phil Morris, the race director, will inform him. Let's watch it again. Yeah, we can see uh, just the rider in white here. Just takes a stab, at, uh, tries to anticipate it. And there he goes, and he's moving when the tapes go up, which is uh, not allowed. They're still moving as they go up. It's the right call, you've got to bring one of those back. Yep, that's not permitted these days. Touch fortunate, not actually, to touch the tapes. So, um, uh, um, uh, he will be in the rerun, but he will be issued a warning. And if he does that again, he will then be excluded. So he's going to have to be uh, on his best behaviour when he goes round for the uh, restart here. Not unusual for Jason to get a warning. No, he quite often is carrying a warning. Yeah. <laughs> does indeed. All fall back then. And uh, Jason Doyle doesn't want to do anything silly now because he's put himself in a good position. And um, he's uh, looking good on seven. So uh, he won't want to slip up now. That man there also on seven points as well, Smarslik. So he'll be looking to build on that for sure. I mean, he's, he was under pressure there. Gate three hasn't won a race all night. Uh, very, very difficult from there. I think he just, you know, thought it's worth the gamble. Yeah, gate three is, 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 is there's no doubt that that's the toughest place to make a start from here this evening. So, you know, he knew that. So quite clearly feeling the pressure of it. but. Uh, will have to sit still this time. Second time of asking them for heat number 16. Every rider will have completed four rides. So here we go again. Green lights on, tapes are up and away we go. Jack Holder's made a good start on the inside. Thompson's coming across from the outside. Thompson on the dirt. Thompson roaring around the outside. Great first corner from Anders Thompson. Jack Holder now through in two. Second place, Jason Doyle in third. Now Bartos Marsic hugging that inside. Can he come through into third place? He does. Doyle Big move from there. Compliment. Doyle now up back up the inside. Does repay the compliment, but Smarsic's read it beautifully. Back up the inside and relegates Doyle to the back. But Anders Thompson, great first corner from him. Jack Holder there hanging on in second place. But I'll tell you what, Bartos Smarsic is there. Fighting hard up the inside, but Anders Thompson, brilliant ride from him. Yeah, Jack Holder now trying to get a bit defensive, riding all over the place down that straight. He knows that Smarslik's working oh! inside. That gets awfully close. Oh, goodness gracious me, how on earth did Bartosz Smarslik miss oh, Jack Holder? Holder? Jack Holder now out of shape, but hangs on to second place. One more corner to go. Anders Thompson has ridden brilliantly here, picking up a win in Heat 16, and Jack Holder, wow. That was a smashing ride for him when I tell you what, Bartos Smarslik threw the kitchen sink in there <laughs> as he came more. up the inside. Thought he was going to run in the side of him and he just gets the solitary point there. But for Jack Holder, he's enjoying a really good Grand Prix. But Anders Thompson, well, that's a handy win for him. He moves on to eight points. Terrific stuff in that first turn. And um, uh, there's no doubt that um, he will... Um, he chuffed a bits with that. Three points for Thompson. Jack Holder, an entertaining 
um, ride there for two points. And Bartosz Smarslik, once again, third place for him, moves on to eight points. Martin Baslik leading the way on 11, Dudek on nine, Bewley on nine as well, Thompson on eight, Smarslik eight, Mickelson seven, Lambert seven as well, Jack Holder going nicely on six. Doyle's on six, so um, there's no question that there's going to be some real pressurised rides in the last rounds. You yeah, see it again, Chris. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, great uh, first turn there from Anders Thompson. Just squeezes around the outside of Jack Holder, and then the race really ensues with Jack Holder and Bartosz Smarzlik. You can see Smarzlik there, he's got the front wheel in the air. Looks like he's made a really, really good start, the way the bike's reacted, but uh, Jack Holder, there in red, and Anders Thompson rounding him up. So now at this point, Bartosz Smarzlik, last place, possibly not going to get anything out of this. Uh, Jason Doyle in the thick of the action as well as he returns the compliment up the inside, but just goes past the corner, and Smarzlik straight back on it. He was indeed, and comes through very nearly got to second place, actually, Smarzlik there with a, an action-packed race with Jack Holder. He got a bit untidy at times, but... Uh, Got to say fair play to Jack Holder for hanging in there and picked up a useful second place. Anders Thompson, though, that was a very useful win after failing to score in his third outing. So he's turned his night around, moving on to eight points with a ride to come. As I say, these uh, last four rides are going to be very important to do. But uh, let's get some more reaction now. We can get back down to the bits with Scott, Scotty Nichols. He's got Patrick Dudek with him. Patrick Dudek joins me. Patrick, you didn't have the start to this series you had wanted, but then you go and win in Tetro and you seem to be kicking on from there. It's similar a little bit, but... Uh, it stopped. And this is not an easy meeting. But what can I say? We need to race uh, because we don't know what's happening with the weather. So we have good uh, time today and waiting for the next hit. So what do you think the change was from the first three Grand Prix to you then going to win in Tetro? You carried that form on 18 point maximum yesterday here in Poland. Weather, the weather has changed. Bikes working better now. Yeah, this is my answer. <laughs> and uh, everything's okay downstairs today, no more problems? Of course, I am ready for the good night, so it's okay. That's the main thing, enjoy the rest of your night, mate. Oh, great to see a big smile on the face of Patrick Dudek. As I say, after the first three rounds, he was looking a bit down in the dumps, but uh, he's riding very well now. Yeah, it's fair to say that Patrick Dudek is a, a fair weather rider then. He uh, only likes the sunshine. He does indeed, yeah, the weather. I've never heard that before, no. but uh, we'll take it. The weather's better, I feel better, the bike's going better. So clearly he likes these uh, sultry temperatures of over 30 degrees. It's um, been action-packed so far, that's for sure. Fans are enjoying themselves. The Edward Yances uh, Stadium is uh, action-packed. That man there, though, I've got no, to say, has had a very disappointing yeah. night. Yeah, he looks lost uh, down there with his mentor, Greg Hancock, sitting on just four points. Looks very unlikely that he's going to be able to qualify for a semi-final spot in his last ride. Yeah, Ryan second in the World Championship. Possibly won't be by the end of the night. Unlikely to make the semi-finals this evening, and that's desperate. He would have been looking to try and get himself right back in the thick of the action. So, as I say, just one more ride each before the semi-finals. And uh, we're very much looking forward to that. So, yeah, a bit more track grading going on. So... OK, we can get back down to the pits now. Scotty Nichols is there for us. We can get some more reaction with him now. Yeah, we're trackside with Bjarni Pjerdsen. Bjarni, Martin Vasilik's having a superb night tonight. What's been the change? Ah, well, you know, it is his home track, so uh, we, we expect a big night tonight. But uh, don't forget, you know, he's a uh, sexy good rider here tonight. So, uh, and uh, the, the bit of rain before he'd won uh, really damaged a bit. But, uh, you know, he got the spirit and, uh, you know, we're trying to push him as hard as possible. Yeah, so it's his home track. We're just looking at the tracks right over us by the fence here. The track is looking like it's getting really deep on the outside. Is Martin, is that something that he likes? Is he excited about the track, the way it's going? Yeah, I think the track is uh, changing in uh, all favour for the moment. Uh, it's, it's more and more a coastal track, so uh, 
Yeah, I don't know if we we have not really changed too much on the bike tonight, but uh, so far so good. Yeah, but a uh, long way to go. And you think a lot of the time with Martin, it's more about him than the bike. He's very much a, a mental rider. Do you think the gap between the GPs has helped him? Well, you know, uh, he's been. Uh, you know, we we have changed few things around in the start of the season and he's just feeling more and more confident out there and uh, believe a bit more in himself uh, try to tell him how good he is every time and uh, he is one of the, the best and he showed this tonight. Uh, whatever you're saying to him is working right now Bjarni. So far so good yeah thanks. Yeah, good to hear from Bjarni Pedersen a world class rider in his own right of course recently retired good to see him there working in the pits with Martin Vasilik. And uh, there's no question that the confidence is high in that camp. And uh, he is riding superbly well here this evening. Yeah, Martin Vasilik uh, meets Bartosz Smarslik in heat 19. There's uh, going to be some fireworks there. They're both on the outside gates. Yeah, teammates as well, of course. But um, uh, this is an individual event. So no quarter will be asked or given, that's for sure. That's Janowski, what's going on there? It's uh, a disappointing time for him. And we talk about it often, such a talented rider, can win Grand Prix, but uh, unfortunately in the last two or three Grand Prix it hasn't gone his way. I fancied this was an important Grand Prix for him to really put pressure on Smarslik, but uh, unfortunately it hasn't, it hasn't worked out. But, um, uh, yeah, can he salvage a little bit of pride here with a win in his final outing? don't think he's going to make the semi-finals, even with a win seven points well you can make the semi-finals on seven but uh, it's uh, not often the case leon madsen as well out here what a race this is for leon five points, five points yeah. needs a win great ride from him last time when he came from the outside so yeah pressure is on i did say earlier that these last round of races are going to be highly pressurized and when you look at it and you look at the point scoring situation there is plenty of pressure here there are so many riders capable of uh, just putting in a good ride and making the semi-finals yeah you really have got to produce now goggles going on they've been given the all clear the track is ready for them and um, they make their way out. Madsen has been very consistent. Um, he has struggled with injuries. He's not fully fit tonight. He's got a neck injury. He's all strapped up, up the back of his neck. Um, uh, clearly feeling the effects of that accident he had in the Danish Championship. But uh, I say, if he can win this, all of a sudden he can salvage something yeah. out of tonight's meeting. For sure, yeah. A win looks like it would uh, almost certainly put him through with two race wins to finish. Goes in his favour, so uh, definitely needs that race win. Inside gate then for Leon Madsen. And Matze Janowski, who has had a disappointing night. Four points for him, a win, and then he'd have to cross his fingers if that would be enough. Possibly won't be, but uh, stranger things have happened. Yeah, Lambert probably needs two points to be 100% certain. What yeah. could possibly be enough. Yeah, he's uh, on seven points and had three second places and a third. Got to say, Anders Thompson was uh, pretty spectacular last time with a win. He's uh, looking good on eight. I would suggest that that might already be enough, but he won't be resting on his laurels. He'll be pushing on to try and get as many points as he can to secure that uh, semi-final place and get a, as good a gate pick as you possibly can. So heat number 17 on the inside then. In red is Leon Matz. And gate number two in blue is Robert Lambert. Gate number three in white is Anders Thompson. And Matze Janowski will go from the outside in yellow this time. Robert Lambert, there we see the lineup there. Leon Madsen on the inside, Lambert in two, Thompson in three, and Janowski on the outside in yellow. Anders Thompson's done well tonight to get eight points. Ran the last in his uh, third outing, but uh, responded brilliantly with that first turn, didn't he? Yeah, two race wins. Uh, he's been very, very quick when he's been in front as well. And as you say, he's uh, made some good decisions in the first turn, made the bike work very well. Heat 17, crunch time for Leon Madsen, that's for sure, on the inside gate, needs a win. That man, also, it's crunch time for him, gonna have to win the race and then hope that seven points possibly could be enough. We'll wait and see after the completion of the 20 qualifying races. Start Marshall, just making sure they're okay. He's okay now, he walks away, green light's on. 
17 and we're away. Matson makes a good start. Really good start from the inside. Hucks the inside, middle of the track. Thompson's coming at it. Lambert. Lambert up the inside, but Leon Matson, brilliant response. Anders Thompson charges up the inside of Robert Lambert into turns three and four in the opening lap. But Leon Matson, after a disappointing start to the evening, has responded superbly. Oh, Matze Janowski goes from bad to worse. He slipped off at the back. Gets the bike up. The race will continue. Out in front, though, Leon Madsen being chased hard by Robert Lambert in second place. Yeah, Madsen is being chased down by Lambert. Lambert just overturning the bike there as he just runs to the outside. And a disastrous evening for Janowski. But Lambert is not giving up on Madsen. He is chasing him down. But Leon Madsen, once he gets the bike hooked up, he uh, doesn't weigh very much. He's probably giving giving a few kilos to, uh, or Lambert's giving a few kilos to him, so we One know he's quick in a straight now. line. Here Robert he comes. Lambert round the outside, but Leon Madsen's ridden a strong race there. Under immense pressure, you've got to give him an awful lot of credit to bounce back there with two wins to finish his qualifying races off. That moves him on to eight points. That just could be enough. He's clearly not fully fair. Got a feel for Janowski, a night to forget for him. But uh, Anders Thompson back in third place and a hard charging ride for a fourth second place on the night for Robert Lambert. He's through to the semi-finals on nine, desperate for a race win. Three points for Leon Madsen. Robert Lambert back in second place, two for him. Anders Thompson, third place there. And uh, he's on to nine. And Matzo Janowski finishing on four. We won't see him again this evening. But there's the standings after heat 17. Anders Thompson going along nicely. Dudek as well with a race in hand, as has Dan Bewley. And Robert Lambert completes his qualifying rides and finishes on nine points. And Leon Madsen, all credit to him. Yeah, all credit to him. He is in a lot of discomfort with the uh, whiplash injury that he's got from the start. There, Leon Madsen just works hard, fully commits himself to that turn, finds himself in the middle of the track, and he's got Lambert up the inside, but Anders Thompson just turns back and absolutely cruises through the inside. I thought at one point he was actually going to straight line Leon Madsen as well. Uh, Lambert then just moves out into the dirt and uh, chases down Leon Madsen, but there we see Janoski just getting it all wrong, sliding off. Just seems his focus is somewhere else, and a terrible night for Magic. Leon Madsen showing great character, battling hard, and finishes on eight points. So heat number 18 then. Jack Holder having a good night. Ty Wolfenden not having a good night. He is uh, desperate for points, he's on four. Possibly a race win may see him in, but it's going to be awfully tight when we come to the conclusion. Possibly won't be enough. Patrick Dudek, though, with the warm weather, his bike's feeling better, he's feeling better, and he's going great. Riders. He's a fair weather rider, and he's going great guns this evening. Jack Holder's had a good night, you know. He's um, uh, well and truly ensconced there. He's on six points, another couple here, and he could well be through to the semi finals. On the inside in red, then, is Jack Holder. Ty Wolfen alongside him in blue. Gate number three is Wozniak in white, and on the outside is Patrick Dudek in the yellow helmet colour. Dudek, I think, could well win this race. You know, he's got a lot of speed, he's got a lot of experience now, and uh, you just sense that he quite likes that run around that first corner. Yeah, he's going to want to go into the semi-finals with a race win. He's going to fill him with a bit more confidence, sitting on nine points. He's comfortable already. He 18. Hasn't been a night that Wuffenden has really been looking for. Has a great record here. It just hasn't panned out that way this evening. The tapes are up and Wuffenden's made a fantastic start from gate number two. Hits that first turn up the banking. Here comes uh, Patrick Dudek. Comes flying through there with a great turn back into second place. They're all going at it there with Jack Holder now being relegated back to the back. I'm going to say that Wozniak is working hard in third place, but this is more like it from Wuffenden. He's out in front, stretching away. What a start it was from gate two. Yeah, he owned the start and the first turn. Ty Wuffenden looking uh, much more like his old self there, that's for sure. But uh, Patrick Tudek, the hole opened up in the first turn and he just uh, rode his bike through it, said thank you very much. Two more points, that'll take him on to 11 and comfortably into the semi-finals. Yeah, looking good, Patrick Tudek there in second place, but Ty Wuffenden, is this too little, too late? Such a shame because he really is looking very accomplished out in front. The three-time former world champion roaring away here. Will it be the last time we see it this evening? We'll have to wait and see. But finishes on seven, finishes with a good ride. Great start from gate number two. Patrick Dudek, dynamite in the first corner. Great turn back. He's had a solid night. He's comfortably through into the semi-finals on 11 points. 
good work there, no doubt about that. Wozniak finishes his night. Hasn't been the night that he really wanted, but he's tried awfully hard. He's been involved in some really hairy races tonight. But for Ty Wuffenden, it's really all about what could have been, you would suggest. Finishing on a ride like that, he'd be thinking, wish the Grand Prix could start now. Yeah, salvage something there. The best reaction, the best drive to the corner. A great decision when he got there. Just picks up the edge of the dirt on the way out. Uh, Dudek says, thank you very much, lads. I'll take two points from this first turn. Uh, he hadn't made a great start. I can see there he wants to come across Jack Holder. He's not there. There's the hole that opened up for him. He just rides through the gap, comfortably taking second place. But uh, I think that ride's going to leave Ty Wolfenden rather frustrated. He'll be thinking, where has that been all night? Yeah, he was in front earlier on. He pretty much admitted that he was riding too conservatively and uh, didn't quite manage to do it when it was Robert Lambert passed him. But... Um, Sorry, excuse me, Dan Bewley passed him earlier on, but this is the star that we've become accustomed to seeing uh, from Ty Wuffenden. And as I say, it's a shame that we possibly won't see him uh, again this evening on uh, seven points, but uh, a frustrated camp, we would suggest. Yeah, I think very much so. He's got a frustrated look on his face, just wondering if that could possibly be enough. I don't think it can be. No, and I think he knows it. Yeah, that look on his face uh, tells you everything. There are two more qualifying races for, before the completion of it, but um, there's no doubt that um, seven points is certainly a nervous place to be, and uh, he'll just have to wait and see how it pans out. Heat number 18, moving on. Max Frick is here. Freddie Lingman also has had a tough time tonight. Another rider with a great record here, and he's on four points, and a race win for him. We'll see him on seven, but... Uh, whether that'll be enough, they may just miss out. Here we are, Bartosz Marslik there, just working hard on the gate. He goes from gate number four, Martin Vasilik, and gate number three. Possibly doesn't want gate number three up against Bartosz Marslik, but he is in flying form tonight, the Slovakian. Heat number 18 on the inside, then in red is Max Frick. Alongside him in blue is Pavel Szapelski. Gate number three in white is Martin Vasilik, and Bartosz Marslik goes from the outside in yellow. Marzlik's had a battle for his points tonight. He's third place last time, battling with uh, Jason Doyle and Jack Holder. He really has had to work hard for every single point. He's he scored. has, yeah. He's had two fine wins, but uh, the two third places have been very action-packed and at times looks a touch hairy in truth, but um, uh, he has such wonderful bike skills that even though it looks a bit out of control, he never seems to get off the bike, or very rarely in truth, but um, an important ride here for Bartosz Marzlik to keep pushing on. Championship leader... That's how Janowski has slipped up tonight. An opportunity for Smarslik to pounce. Away they go. Frick's made a good start on the inside. Smarslik's there. Wow. Round the outside. How about that? Absolutely. Textbook once again from Bartosz Smarslik. Going to be tough to catch him from there. Martin Vasilik now riding out of his skin round the outside. What a move that was from Vasilik to get the better of Pavel Szapelski on the opening lap. Now Martin Vasilik, look at the speed yeah, he's, he's got in he's second chasing, place. He's chasing Smarsnik down. He's got plenty of speed. He had to come from gate three. That's been a nightmare all night, but he's made a great job on the opening lap to get himself into second place behind Smarsnik, and he is chasing him down. He is indeed, but Smarsnik's pretty much got this covered. He likes that outside run there. They're going wider and wider. The dirt's moved out now. They're hooking up, and Smarsnik stretching away. Great stuff early doors from Martin Vasilik to move himself into a solid second place. He'll be pleased with that. He's probably going to be leading the Grand Prix after the completion of 20 races. But the crowd are on their feet. Bartosz Smarslik, the local hero, wins his third race win of the evening. 11 points from 15. Hasn't been always plain sailing for him, but uh, finishes his qualifiers off in style there. Martin Vasilik working very hard momentarily putting pressure on Bartosz Smarslik. But that race was all about the championship leader. It was. I think it was important to, uh, for Vasilik just to keep the pressure on Smarslik, let him know he's there, let him know he can go as quick as we head into the semi-final stages. Yeah, he made a statement for sure, Chris. Yeah, three points for Smarslik, two points for Martin Vasilik. Pavel Szapelski finishes with third place there, and Max Frick, well, a night to forget for him. 13 points leading the way is Vasilik. Smarslik moves on to 11. Nine points for Thompson. Dudek on nine. Dan Bewley on nine. Lambert on nine as well. Leon Madsen on eight. And Mickelson on seven, but it's got a ride to come. So those guys that are sitting on seven points are extremely vulnerable. Here we go, then. 
We're glad to see Schmarzenick does sweat. It does look a bit hot. He is working hard, but uh, Max Frick there makes a decent start in red from the outside. Runs across, but Schmarzenick's already built up that momentum around the outside. He's got the bike going forward. And uh, I've got to say, Vashnik actually made a pretty good jump from three, but you just don't seem to get a run to the corner. And his first lap here is absolutely outstanding. As Schmarzenick hits the front, and uh, Vashnik just deals with Max Frick on the uh, back straight and then uh, gets himself into second place ahead of Chapelsky. Yep. Uh, come to the stride there. That's what champions are made of when the chips were down, he produced there. Martin Vassilik, as you said, made a good start there, but that run to the first turn, you just don't get the grip coming away from gate number three in the semi-finals. I would suggest that's going to be the final pick uh, for yeah, the riders. That one will be left. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So here we are then, heat number 20. On the inside is Dan Bewley going great guns. Freddie Lingren coming out of gate number two in blue. Mikkel Mickelson having a good night as well. Gate number three for him. And on the outside in yellow is Jason Doyle still searching for points. Still a very important race here for all riders, of course. But for Dan Bewley, I tell you what, he's having a great night. He sits in fifth place at this stage on nine. I tell you what, this is the best Grand Prix so far for him, looking comfortable for the semi-finals. A win here, finishing on 12, he's going to get a very good pick for the semi-finals yes, yeah. for the start place. So he still want to push on. No, no, absolutely. He'll be wanting to take three points out of this race. And uh, he has the least pressure of the four riders. Yeah, that's right. Start Marshall just calling Freddie Lingwin forward. And uh, here we go then. Green light comes on, heat number 20, and away they go. It's a good start from Bewley, he made a great start actually. He was clear into the first corner. Doyle's coming roaring around the outside. Freddie Lingwin's in second place, but Doyle now makes that his. But Bewley, what a start that was from him. Superb away from the inside. Doyle's coming through strongly now in second. Freddie Lingwin back in third, and Mickelson has missed out. That gate number three once again, proving to be awfully difficult to win races from there. But look at the speed. Look at the speed of Dan Bewley. I can't rider out in the grip powering away out in front the confidence that Dan Bewley has got in his equipment right oh. now is absolutely outstanding oh. he's picking up so much speed and I, I was really impressed with the first turn because he made a clear start he wasn't attempted to go for the dirt he Trap realized record. the bike was Trap going record to him, mate. I don't think so, mate. <laughs> he just he just didn't realize he didn't need to go to the dirt around the first turn he's got that much confidence in what's going on underneath him well, he's a country mile in front, a stunning ride from Dan Bewley, finishing off in style. Wants to pull a wheelie, didn't quite do it, managed to do it. Finishes on 12 points, absolutely dominant there, Dan Bewley. Class of his own, finishes his qualifying, heats off in tremendous style. Jason Doyle finishing with two points there, and uh, that moves him on to eight, and uh, that should be enough. We'll see how tight it is. Race wins are going to come into the equation here as well. There's no doubt about that. But for Dan Bewley, he has no such concerns. He sits in second place after the qualifying races and uh, is in fine form. And it's, if he can keep it up, he's going to be a major threat here for Schmalslick and Martin Vashlick. There's no question of that. So um, uh, could well have two Brits through to the semi-finals. Here we see the result. Three points for Bewley. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Jason Doyle out in front. Excuse me. Jason Doyle back in second place. Two points for him. Freddie Lingren in third. And Mikkel Mickelson just uh, misses out that time. At a crucial time, actually, for Mickelson. That uh, could be very costly. Yes, and it looks like Jason Doyle has just crept into the semi-finals. But uh, you can see Dan Bewley there. He knows that uh, there'll be people go having gone to the dirt from the outer gates, but uh, he's just crept around the inside mid-track. He hasn't panicked and gone straight to the dirt line and left that big hole for everybody to chase through. And uh, here it gets a little bit hairy for him because the bike straightens up dramatically do you, do you as he goes sideways just, into that just, dirt. Just reassess that. <laughs> dramatic. It was dramatic. <laughs> Oh, uh, he, he looked, me to death. He did indeed, indeed. Yeah, he had to take a deep breath in. But uh, well, how fast was he though? How it fast? was a, a ter terrific ride from Dan Bewley, and uh, smoothly through to the semi-finals. <laughs> so we are now moments away from confirming the top eight, and um, uh, it's looking like. Uh, and, uh, Jason Dorr may have just crept in there. That's, um, uh, he finished with eight points. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, uh, so it's um, uh, 
It's coming soon. The FIM will confirm that to us. I don't want to preempt it too much, but uh, in my book, Jason Doyle is the final qualifier. And uh, he's on eight, so the riders on seven have just missed out. And that will, of course, mean that Ty Woofenden's night is over. And that frustration on his face, he pretty much knew it, didn't he? Yeah, but, he did, uh, yeah. you know, it was too little, too late for him. I love Dan Buley's attitude. You know, I was talking to him earlier today. He's so relaxed about the whole thing. He just says, it's my first year, I want to enjoy it. And he certainly looks like he's doing that. And his biggest concern today, if you can believe it, was sunburn. Yeah, well, he's a fair-skinned boy, isn't he? And it was, it was quite, well, it was red hot today. So, yes, he was ducking out of the sun, wisely so. Um, but uh, it hasn't affected his performance on the track. He's been the second-best rider over the qualifying races with Martin Vasilik uh, uh, finishing on 13 points. Track grading going on prior to the semi-finals. Still waiting for confirmation for the top eight. We, we do think that um, uh, Robert Lambert Thompson are all there, but um, uh, there's no doubt that he, um, uh, it will be just a, a uh, double check for this. And uh, we've got um, something, uh, just as I say, just a few moments to wait now before we get that confirmed. And Phil Morris then will be on with the gate positions for the uh, very important semi-finals to see who will go through to the grand, grand final. We are going to be able to get some more reaction from the pits with Scotty Nichols very shortly. And um, we can hear from Freddie Lingren now. He joins Scotty Nichols. Yeah, Freddie Lingren joins me. Freddie, such a tough night, mate. You give it your all, but uh, you're saying you had some bike problems right from the get-go. Yeah, from the beginning. Uh, uh, my first bike uh, died on practice start, jumped on the second bike in the first heat, and it was vibrating a lot, and I couldn't ride it. I threw my third back in the second heat was very slow and try and get the, the first back going again and we just, we just uh, wasn't my day today. No, and you had a, an amazing, I think it was your third race, you had a great battle, got the win and then conditions really bad out there, slipped off after race. I saw the guys working frantically on the bike. I don't think maybe some people appreciate just how dirty and messy the bike's got tonight, a proper headache. No, it's, it was really dirty, you know, we had a lot of rain like in a short time and uh, just pushed on and didn't do any track grade either. I don't know why, you know, Phil made that call. Uh, I don't agree with him on that. And, uh, ah, well, it is what it is. Yeah, it's tough, mate. Not always going to agree with it. But uh, you know what? Thanks for talking. I know you're disappointed, but move on to the next one. Thank you. Yeah, disappointing night for Freddie, but we will see him in Cardiff, of course, in the Principality Stadium. He's got the uh, Speedway of Nations also to look forward to at the end of July in Denmark, in Esberg. We've got that coming up four consecutive nights of Speedway in the Speedway of Nations. So uh, plenty of Speedway coming up. So semi-final time now. Three big races to come where the big World Championship points are dished out. Qualifying points are now null and void. They're wiped clean. Qualifiers through. We still haven't had it confirmed yet, but um, uh, we will do bring that to you as soon as we possibly can. As I said before, I don't want to jump in and then um, uh, there's a, a count back or something hasn't quite uh, gone to plan, but we do believe that Jason Doyle is the final qualifier and um, uh, we will see exactly which way that falls. It's been a great night of Speedway. Gorshoff has certainly lived up to the expectations, that's for sure. We've got Bartosz Schmarslik through, the home crowd favourite. Patrick Dudek is going great guns as well. Martin Vasilik must be a major threat for a win here this evening. And uh, I've got to say, Robert Lambert and Dan Bewley have done themselves proud as well. They have, absolutely. And Dan Bewley just seems to be uh, going so, so quickly. So it's uh, very, very difficult to call these semi-finals. Yeah, it is. And uh, quite clearly, gate number three is one to avoid, if at all possible. So that's why the pressure was on to keep scoring points to make, make it so that uh, we uh, miss out on that. Three points for Bewley in Heat 20. Jason Doyle second, Freddie Lingwin third, and Mikkel Mickelson. And so here we see now the confirmation with um, uh, Vasilik Bewley, Smarslik, Dudek, Thompson, Robert Lambert, Leon Madsen, great effort from him, yeah. and Jason Doyle creeping in on eight, and Mickelson and Wuffenden missing out on the seven points. So disappointment for those two boys in particular. Jack Holder also will be disappointed after a strong start to the night. But uh, got to say, these are going to be tough semi-finals for sure. Yeah, great effort from Anders Thompson and Leon Madsen, given their uh, current fitness states. And uh, 
Unlucky for Mikkel Mikkelsen, started so brightly and uh, certainly seems to be suffering the most and just missing out by one place. Yeah, maybe that injury just catching up with him as the, the night went on, maybe just getting a little bit uncomfortable there. Rode very well at the early stages of the night and uh, was looking set fair, actually. Had a good foundation to work from, but uh, just slipped away. Questions to be asked about Matze Janowski and Ty Wooferden. Championship chases are not going to plan. And all of a sudden, their top six positions are going to be under threat. And uh, it's working out very nicely here for... Bartosz Marslik with his nearest nearest, compa nearest competitors actually falling away. So semi-final draw time. Here we go with Phil Morris. Semi-final one is Martin Vasulik. Martin, select your colour, please. Martin selects the red gate position. Inside gate for Martin. No hesitation. And next to make the selection is Patrick Dudek. Select your colour, please. And Patrick selects the yellow gate position. Gate four for Patrick Dudek. And third to make his choice is Robert Lambert. Please select your colour. Robert selects the blue gate position. No surprise there. And finally, Leon Madsen has the last choice and selects the white gate position. Unfortunately, that's his reward <laughs> for riding so well, gets gate three in the first semi-final. So uh, there we go. On the inside is Martin Thank you guys. Gate number two is Robert Lambert. Leon Madsen out of uh, gate number three in white. And Patrick Dudek, who's having a good Grand Prix as well, We'll go from the outside in yellow. Semi-final number one. So semi-final number two now. And the first selection for semi-final two goes to Dan Bewley. Please select your colour. Dan selects the red gate position. Bewley going from the inside gate. Next to make his selection is Bartos Smarslik, who goes straight for the yellow gate position. Smarslik from the outside. He'll be happy with that, I think. And next to make his sele selection is Anders Thompson. Anders, select your colour, please. Anders selects the blue gate position. Yeah, it's going and the to. The final selection goes to Jason Doyle, who selects the white gate position. So, pretty much going to script there. <clears throat> Smarslik will be Thank pleased. You guys with uh, gate number four. Semi-final number two, then the line-up. We'll just uh, confirm that. Dan Bewley on the inside in red, Anders Thompson in blue, gate two. Jason Doyle in white, uh, gate number three. And Bartosz Smarzik will go from gate four in the yellow helmet colour. Semi-final number two for you. Yeah, that was uh, quite predictable, really. I, I felt that's how it would go. I think um, not much between gates one, two and four, but uh, if that's the case, you really want to be on the inside of everybody. Indeed, every chance of making it the final tonight. Let's just have a bit of a recap on what we've seen so far this evening. So spectacular action we've witnessed so far, but the three most important races of the night coming up. As I say, uh, the qualifying points now are wiped away. 
and uh, you start from scratch effectively and the big world championships will be dished out after the conclusion of these next three races first two will go through to the final of course it's the 3w fim speedway gp of poland that we are watching here in the edward jensa stadium in gorzhov it's been a great night of speedway tough to call very tough to call but there's no question that Bartosz smarslik martin vasilik and dan buley have been the best three riders on show tonight i would suggest but uh, Patrick Dudek there could very well be a spoiler here, very well. Yeah, he could easily gatecrash this party, as that man could as well, Robert Lambert. We're seeing him ride very, very well in the leagues, week in, week out. And as you said earlier, won the Ty Wolf in the testimonial, so he's in good form. Yeah, he is in good form. Riders making their way round. Martin Veselik had no hesitation in going for gate number one. Jason Crump there alongside uh, Robert Lambert, encouraging his man on. Can he make another final? Of course, he just missed out in the final in Tetro, finishing fourth. He'll be uh, absolutely uh, keen as mustard to make the final again here in Gorzhov. He's certainly riding well. Hasn't won a race tonight, but he's been in the thick of the action throughout the evening, that's for sure. Martin, Kelvin, if you're, if you're Vasilik on the inside and Bewley in the next one, do you worry about the riders coming off gate four, or do you just go around the inside and if it's second place, I think he'll get you in the final? I think I'm clear, I'm going up the banking. You're going, up the, than going up the bank and okay. I've got to trust I'm going to okay. find the speed down the back straight. Even if I'm relegated to second, I've got half a chance. Anyway, it's a bit of a lottery in that first turn, but you've got to trust yourself, you've got to trust your instincts. Big semi-final here, Martin Vasilik leading the way in the qualifiers. Got to produce now. On the inside in red is Martin Vasilik. Gate number two in blue is Robert Lambert. Gate number three is Leon Matson. Done well to get this far. Patrick Dudek riding supremely well from the outside in yellow. Brilliant semi-final number one lineup. Which way is it going to go? We haven't got too much longer to wait. Super night of speedway. Gorshoff really coming to the fore. Great atmosphere, great thrilling speedway we've watched so far with three great speedway heats to come to conclude the night. Settling down for semi-final number one in the Edward Yance Stadium here this evening. Green light is about to come on. It's on now. Takes her up and away we go. Martin Vasilik's made a good start, but Dudek's there. Dudek's made a fantastic start from the outside. Roars around that first corner, powers down the back straight, gets his nose in front. Martin Vasilik settling in second place. Lambert there in third. Leon Madsen's at the back, but Patrick Dudek. He could be the party pooper. It's looking like he's going to go through to the final now. Yeah, I think he was very happy to be going off gate four. Gave him the options. And uh, this race, this semi-final, going to the form book. The two highest scoring riders in this race out front. But Martin Vasilik looking more uncomfortable, in fairness, in this race than he has done all night. And Lambert not giving up. No, Lambert pushing on there in third place, doing everything he possibly can. Dudek's comfortable. Back to go for Dudek. Reproducing the form we saw two weeks ago in Tetra, really riding superbly well. Down the back straight, can Lambert produce anything? Oh my goodness, he's gone in hard there. No, it's not going to be. Dudek and Vasilik through to the final. Stunning first corner and start from Dudek. Sealed the deal. Vasilik for the first time under pressure, a little untidy, but joins Dudek in the final. Disappointment for Lambert. Leon Madsen coming out of gate three. Wasn't to be for the Danish rider, did well just to make the semi-finals. But Patrick Dudek back to his best. Yeah, Dudek, uh, great win from him in that race. But uh, as you say, Vasilek coming under pressure from Lambert, who threw absolutely everything all the way down to the last corner. Three points then for Dudek. He goes through to the final. Vasilek joins him. Robert Lambert and Madsen missing out. Disappointment for them, but they still pick up very good world championship points, that's for sure. Dudek there, just taking a deep breath. He was giving it absolutely everything here in semi-final one. Well, you know what it means to these Polish riders in front of their home fans to be in the final and give themselves a chance of victory. But what a start from Dudek. Comes right across Vasilek. We were talking before the race. What do the riders uh, coming off the inside gate in these semi-finals do? Do they run up the banking? Well, unfortunately for Martin Vasilek, he was never given that opportunity. Great, great start from Dudek. And as I said, Vasilik never really settling down in this race, never really looked comfortable. And Robert Lambert throwing absolutely everything at it. He did indeed, but it just wasn't to be for Robert Lambert. Hasn't quite managed to win a race tonight. And he'll be a touch frustrated about that, but uh, 
the opposite applies to that man. Clearly delighted to have made the final. As I say, one, two weeks ago, he's on a roll. Confidence back. Spoke to Scotty Nichols earlier. The big difference is the weather. It's warm. The bike's warm. He's red hot. And he's riding out of his skin. Good to see Dudek back on top form. Semi-final number two. Here we go, then. Smarslick's out here. Bewley's been going great. Bewley on the inside. He'll go from the inside gate in a red helmet colour. Tough to score, but you've got to believe that Smarslick will be pleased to be going from the outside. Having witnessed Dudek come charging across from the outside, must fill in with confidence. He'll have every chance to do something very similar. He never exactly lacks in confidence, does he, Bartosz uh, That's a very good point. Well made. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> there he is, just doing a bit of gardening work. So the lineup for semi-final number two, then. Dan Bewley will go from the inside in the red helmet colour. Alongside him is Anders Thompson. He'll go from gate number two in blue. Gate number three is Jason Doyle on a warning in white. And Bartosz Marslik, the home crowd favourite, the championship leader, his nearest compatriots falling away. It's all going his way. No doubt about that. He could have a substantial lead at the end of the night. Outside gate, yellow helmet colour for Smarslik. I tell you what, this could be a pivotal moment in the championship. This he wins good, yeah. tonight, Chris. He could well be pulling further and further away. He's going to make himself very comfortable at the top. Here we go then, semi-final number two. Green light's about to come on. Now, takes her up and away we go. Draw to the first corner. Thompson's made a good start. Bewley's there alongside him. Barca Smarslick's missed out. He's through into third, though. Oh, Thompson, now oh, Smarslick. Bewley's now just got himself in a slightly difficult position. He's round the outside. Smarslick's there, slams the door shut. Thompson looking good. Doyle pushing hard out the back as well. But for Anders Thompson now being charged and pushed so hard by Barca Smarslick. Will Smarslick look to pass? Will he push on for a win? Got to say there, Bewley also looking threatening in third place. Brilliant semi-final. Yeah, Dan Bewley will just be hoping that Anders Thompson could slow Smarslick down, but to be fair to Anders Thompson, he's out front, he's got the speed. Smarslick really doesn't have an answer for him. Now looking back just to see where Dan Bewley is. Got to say, I feel for Dan Bewley. There was a lot of traffic on that first lap, and he just got caught in the wrong places at the wrong time. Anders Thompson through the last turn in semi-final two. What a spectacular ride from here. Thompson, Smarslick once again having to work awfully hard to join him in the final. Got a feel for Bewley, just got himself in a little bit of a prickle there on the opening lap. As you say, Chris, traffic was everywhere. It was like the M25 going around the bottom corner there on the opening lap. Doyle misses out. Gate number three also later in the night really has been tough to win races from there. But Anders Thompson, after that bad crash he had in Denmark 10 days ago, what a way to bounce back by making the final here in Gorjov. And two home riders, two club riders through to the, to the big final here this evening. Bewley celebrates there, waves goodbye to the crowd. Shame he doesn't make the final, he's had a great night. Thompson and Smarsley through to the final. Bewley and Doyle just missing out this time. What a ride from Smarsley. I mean, he had to work really hard there. Yeah, it, it looked all over for him as they left the first turn. But he just uh, moved his body weight to the back of the bike and went down the inside of that back straight. And there was only one place he was going from there. But as we watch the start, Dan Bewley creeps through the inside. And I'm thinking at this point, he's done all he needs to do. But he just gets swallowed up by Anders Thompson, has to get a little bit off the gas. and then that point well Smarslick has just roared down the inside and again though on this first lap oh. you've got to say Dan Bewley looks like he's got a chance we know he's got the speed uh, but he just yeah. can't find the gaps and Smarslick does everything right on this opening lap yeah that was experience coming to the fore there track knowledge determination got a feel for Bewley but just as you said traffic was a problem Traffic was a problem on the way to the airport on Friday as well on the M25, and I feel for Bewley, very frustrating it can yes, be. You know exactly but those, what it's like. <laughs> those two boys will go through to the final. What a final we're in for. It's going to be oh, a terrific, terrific conclusion to the night. Don't go anywhere, folks. I tell you what, it's going to be a thrilling finale, that's for sure. So we've got the final gate choice next. Slight delay. There won't be any track grading now. They'll leave the track alone. Um, they don't do that for the final. But there's no doubt that this man is all going the way for Smarslick this evening. He's going to leave here. He's 
Pipe possibly with more than a 20-point lead in the championship. And that really will be quite a substantial lead. Anders Thompson, well, all credit to him. What a night he's enjoying, showing great grit and determination to make the final. As I say, there were question marks over whether he should be riding at this stage. But by golly, he has come through in flying colours. Yes, he certainly has. And he'd be very happy with his night's work, but he's going to want to put it to bed. He's now just listening to the wise words of uh, Hans Nielsen, 22 times a world champion in uh, one form or another in Speedway. And he's a man that you would be listening to. And I'm sure oh, he's yeah. taking every single word in. Absolutely right. Plenty of advice for Anders Thompson. Could he win a Grand Prix here at his home club in front of the home crowd? Would be quite spectacular. Patrick Dudek is up for the challenge. He looks tired, actually, Patrick Dudek. <laughs> Certainly looked that. like he was out of breath when he came in after that effort in the semi-final one. De Brocky there, the team manager, chatting with him as well. Two poles in the uh, final. Martin Basilic in there, so three home riders in the final. Wow, that's a treat for the home fans. Dan Bewley, a touch disappointed. Really did look like he was going to make his first final. Yeah. But uh, that was a tough semi-final, that, wasn't it? It really was a tough was. one, and, and it just got stuck in the traffic. Wrong place, wrong time. He's certainly uh, riding easily well enough and got the speed in the bike. So it's touch will unfortunate, come. but his time is coming, and I think it will come this year. Yeah, yeah, we'd like to look forward to Cardiff, of course, in the Principality. A performance like that will certainly get the Brits on the edges of their seats. I mean, the form that uh, Robert Lambert's in, Ty Wolfenden is a little bit hit and miss, but he knows all about... Uh, Cardiff and, and what it takes to, to win there. So Dan Bewley riding like he is, you know, the British fans have got a lot to look forward to. Guys. There's no doubt about that. It's going to be an extra special weekend there in Wales. Looking forward to it immensely. But we're looking forward to, firstly, a stunning final here to conclude the night's action. It's been a terrific night at Grand Prix Speedway, a great advert for Grand Prix Speedway. The new era of Speedway is here to stay, that's for sure. So the final draw is coming up right now. And the rider gate selections for the final first selection goes to Patrick Dudek. Please select your colour. And Patrick selects the red gate position. Inside gate for Dudek. And next to make the selection is Anders Thompson. Anders, please select your start position number, colour. Anders selects the blue gate position. And the third selection goes to Martin Vasulik, who goes straight for the yellow gate position. Yep, he'll be pleased with that. <laughs> and the final choice goes to Bartos Marslik, who selects the white gate position. So pretty much the script again, Bartos Marslik. So the final then on the inside gate will be Patrick Dudek. Gate number two will be Anders Thompson. Gate number three will be the championship leader, Bartos Smarslik. And Martin Vasilik will go from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. And you've got to say, a 75% chance for a home victory here for the crowd, uh, for the uh, Style Gorjov team, Chris. Yeah. What a night for the club. Yeah, yeah, three riders, Thompson, Zulik, and, of course, Smarslik. Quite happy to be uh, see Smarslik be coming off gate three, to be honest, <laughs> because that's going to make it really, really interesting. It certainly will. We've seen the two riders in the semi-finals miss out from gate number three, so it is difficult to win from there. But uh, we've seen uh, miracles performed by Smarslik before, but he has had to battle hard tonight. It hasn't been some uh, plain sailing for him. He's had a couple of third places during the qualifying races where, in truth, he really did have to work overtime to pick up those points. So um, uh, not a guaranteed win. I think this man has got a good chance now. Absolutely, yeah. Dudek has been a party pooper. He's, he's Polish, of course, but he doesn't ride for Stal Gorzhov. Um, but uh, nonetheless, he's a, a Polish rider in front of a Polish audience. The temperature's up, and uh, he's enjoyed a great night of Speedway. Anders Thompson just broke the mould there with the gate choice of uh, blue, but he did win, of course, his semi-final from gate two, so I'm sure that was uh, what he was thinking. Well, that may be part of the conversation he was having with Hans Nielsen there. You know, the one from there, do it again. We've seen that on more than one occasion this year when a rider has a good feeling about a gate position, gets to this stage of the night. It's all about how your mindset is. You feel comfortable there? Right, 
That's what I'm going to do. But Dudek has been great. Turned on the style the longer the meeting's gone on, that's for sure. As the track's got better, so has Dudek. Thompson's ridden superbly well as well. All these guys, of course, 20 points for a win, 18 points for second, 16 for third, 14 for fourth. So even if even if part of Smarslik misses out on the rostrum here, 14 championship points, well, you know, you've got to believe that he's going to move on to, what, 76 at the very minimum. Yeah, he's and going to be stretching that lead. That's, that's going to be job done. But, of course, he wants to win in front of his home crowd. He's won twice here before. And uh, one in 2020 on the double header on the first night, one in 2014. Has a great record, made every final apart from one. And um, uh, that record continues here with a final appearance here in 2022. I really don't think he's actually thinking about points in this race. He just wants to win for his home fans. Well, he's guaranteed 14, isn't he? So, yes, I think uh, that's right. He's just looking for a win on the night. Won't be easy from gate three. Can he produce something a bit special? So here they come for the final time of the evening here in the Edward Yancez Stadium. As I said before, a new era of Speedway with Discovery Sports events. It's been a fabulous night of Speedway. A great credit to the sport. Packed house, great atmosphere. Fans are on their feet. This place is going to go ballistic if Smarslick wins, that's for sure. Um, they won't leave then, will they? They'll be celebrating long in tonight. But I'll tell you what, there's three other riders looking to lower the colours of Smarzik, that's for sure. Vassilik will be keen, very keen to win another Grand Prix. Go yeah, with prediction time. Oh, tough one to call here. I'm going to go with Vassilik, you know. I'm going to go with Martin Vassilik from the outside. I think he might just be able to do it. But it's very, very tight, that's for sure. OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stick my neck on the line and go with Anders Thompson. Yep, he's done well. Wouldn't be a surprise. He's ridden superbly well. Dudek on the inside, then. Final time, last four laps of the evening. Here we go. Heat 23, the final here in the Edward Ganses. It's the 3WFIM Speedway GP of Poland here in Gorzhov tonight. Just taking their time, few deep breaths. Just trying to hold yourself together. Produce something a little bit special when you really need to. Don't jump the start, don't touch the tapes, <laughs> don't blow it now. One last push. One oh, last the push. Whole evening comes I tell you down what, the intensity race. of the racing tonight has been spectacular. Yeah, Here on the inside, class. Patrick Dudek in red. Alongside him is Anders Thompson in blue. Bartos smiles to the out of gate number three in white. Martin Vasilik from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Final time here in the Edward Yancesh. Here we go, start Marshall just making sure that they're going to be in the right place. Nerves are jangling. 60 seconds to prove we can win here this evening. Not too much longer now, green light comes on now. Away we go. Great start from Smarsley, they've got to say he's made a good start there, but Dudek's there on the inside, but Thompson, keep your eyes on Thompson. Whoa, what a move from Bachelet to come through into third place, very nearly into second place, but Anders Thompson out of gate number two. He fires himself to the front, superb opening lap from him. Smarsley's out the back, Dudek in trouble. Smarsley must now capitalise, surely. Yes, he does, he's through into third place. Martin Bachelet in second place, but Anders Thompson out in front, riding out of his skin. Tell you, Anders Thompson keeps this smooth, doesn't make any mistakes. That's the only thing I feel is going to hand it to Vashnik. Smarsnik making so much ground up just in one corner. He's uh, looking for a higher step on the podium. But here he here comes. comes, here he comes. Oh, Thompson's got it. Oh, Smarsnik now loses momentum down the back straight for the last time. What a performance from Anders Thompson. Brilliant Spectacular stuff. stuff from him. Round right the last corner, Anders Thompson, Anders Thompson wins it here. Stadium, the life for him. Smarslik back in third place. Dudek just missing out. Vasilik in their second. Wow, what a performance from Anders Thompson. I tip my hat to him. Yeah, brilliant. In truth, a lot of people were saying he shouldn't be riding, but by golly, he's ridden out of his skin tonight, Chris. Yes, that is has. a sensational win for Anders Thompson. Yeah, fully deserved. He's plugged away all night. Hasn't looked spectacular, but he did it when it counted.
and his semi-final and final performance were first class. They were indeed a master class from the Danish rider, finished second in the Danish championship to Rasmus Jensen on Wednesday night. Comes here to Gorzhov, picks up the Grand Prix win. Fantastic moment for Anders Thompson. Gotta say that really is quite spectacular. But possibly the biggest winner on the night is Smarsley. Yeah. With the compatriots and his closest contenders slipping away, picks up 16 points, moves on to 78. It's going to be a big, big lead in the championship as we move forward to Cardiff on August the 12th in the Principality Stadium. Don't miss that. But for now, the night belongs to Anders Thompson. Congratulations, Anders Thompson. Fantastic way to finish his night. Superb. Fully deserved, as you say, Chris. He, uh, he's built into the meeting. Difficult conditions with the rain initially. Yeah, yeah. The riders have coped admirably. There was a few heated words about the conditions, but they continue on. Yeah, Jack's got better and better the night's has, gone yeah. on. It's been superb. And Anders just ran that last in the middle of the meeting. Easy to lose your way at that point when you do that. And well, they kept yeah. everything together. Yeah, good point. Failed to food, score in his fourth ride. Bounced back with a win and then won the semi-final and the final. Great night for him. Good night for Martin Vasilik as well. That uh, does his world championship a power of good with 18 points here tonight. Of course, he won in Prague. It's going to be well ensconced in the top six now, that's for sure. But now let's just celebrate with Anders Thompson, a Danish rider on top of the rostrum. The winner here in the Edward Janssen, in Gorzhov, Anders Thompson. Yeah, he's going to have that smile on his face, uh, I think, even when he falls asleep, Kelvin. He will, yeah. He, to be honest, even when things aren't going very well, he still smiles. Well, he does. So he, he can't take it off his face. He, exactly. Right. He's um, certainly going to be having a beaming smile for a few days, that's for sure. And uh, Martin Vasilik also will be pleased. Smarslik, of course, would want to, would have been desperate to win, but gate three was always going to be tough from there. He battled hard with Dudek getting himself in a little bit of a problem, and he was able to capitalise on that, so he gets on the roster and so he'll be able to celebrate with the other two riders. That's what I like about Smarslik. You know, it's a, it's a third place, but he um, he's spending so much time thanking his fans. He knows the support he's got. He knows what it means to them. And he spent a long time just seeing and making sure he sees every part of the stadium. Well, they're the lifeblood of the sport, aren't they? The fans, at the end of the day, they pay their hard-earned cash to come and watch the riders. It's been a great show. The riders have performed brilliantly. It wasn't ideal initially, but they showed great fortitude to power on through difficult conditions. The track improved, the racing improved, and we've witnessed the stunning Grand Prix here tonight. And it's Thompson comes off gate two. I think that was a very important move, actually, just to stop uh, Bartosz Schmarsley, because he'd made a pretty good fist of it from gate three. Yeah. Difficult all night, and he really had made a decent start from there. We can see Martin oh. Vasilik, that thing, he's pulling his arms out, and he does so, so well to keep that under wow. control. That was a bit of a moment for him. I'll tell you what, great shots on the slow motion. Look at the Brilliant roost stuff. coming off yeah, of Anders Yeah, he's Johnson. taking it from every angle. I'll tell you what, Martin Vasilik, absolutely 100% oh, commitment. That was so close that was tight as well, yeah, deep breath there for Patrick Dudek, but that was the moment that saw him slip back to fourth place and Smarslik was able to come through into third. Fabulous racing. Track got really good at the end of the night. Thompson won actually relatively comfortably in the end, actually. He pulled further and further away. Smarslik pushing hard yeah, for second gave place. Up. Never gave, He doesn't know how to, does he? It's just not in his no, DNA. But I've got to say, full credit to all 16 riders because they have put on a fantastic race meeting. As you said, difficult conditions, early doors. Uh, but there's three very happy Gorzhov boys. Yeah, the club will be overjoyed with uh, their three riders on the rostrum. As I say, coming through in fine style. Here's the championship points, 20 points for Thompson. Vasilik 18, 16 for Smarslik, Dudek 14. Bewley is a handy 12 points for him with Lambert on 11. Leon Madsen, well, he'll be satisfied with 10. Doyle got nine. Mickelson eight, Wolfenden seven. And then we look all the way down to Maxfrick, who had a night to forget. But um, the reverse is uh, no question that um, uh, Anders Thompson has got a night to remember. Here we see the overall standings, 18-point lead. Wow, 78 points for him. Leon Metzen into second place. Not a bad night for him. 53 for Vasilik. Wow, what a move for him. Janowski slipping down, 53 also. Freddie Lingwin, 51. Wuffenham, 50. Anders Thompson moving forward now on 49. Six places. Yeah, absolutely stunning Six move for places. him. And also Dan Bewley, although he hasn't moved very far, it's still awfully tight there. Yep. He's back in 11th. 
but so but no question Bartosz Smarslik will be a big winner tonight with an 18 point lead going to Cardiff but here we can hear from the winner he joins Scott Nichols now your FIM Speedway Grand Prix winner from the Edward Yantesh Stadium here in Gorjoff is Anders Thompson. Anders, how good is that? Wow, my first ever win and on home track in Poland. Wow, what an amazing feeling and what a lovely fans we have here. Yeah, you're always smiling, but I think it's going to take about three months to wipe that smile off your face now. Yeah, for sure. This is my dream come true. Since I was a small guy on three years old and I started riding the speeder bike, I told my dad, Dad, I want to be in the Grand Prix. Now I'm the Grand Prix and now I'm the top of the podium. So I'm so happy. Mate, I'm happy for you. Your parents will be happy too. You've had a tough run. You've had a good old bang on the head and it was a tough night. You kind of had to really battle your way through, but when it really mattered, you shone through and uh, showed that home track knowledge. Yeah, maybe in, before next uh, Grand Prix, I need a crash again. <laughs> <laughs> Give another bump on the head. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, well done, mate, and uh, thank you very much for joining us and go and enjoy the celebrations. Thank you, Gosso. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, there's one very happy Speedway rider. <laughs> and uh, great to see him on top of the box tonight. Great effort from him. As I say, the home crowd are delighted as well with all three riders from the club. And, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, now waiting for the celebrations on the rostrum to come. The presentations will be coming forward very shortly. So um, uh, we will hear the Danish national anthem. And uh, I got accustomed to hearing that very regularly. So here comes Bartosz Smarsik, third place on the night with his youngster there. Clearly enjoying it, a family man these Love days. It. Love it. Fabulous reception for the championship leader, the two-time world champion. To say 78 championship points to his name now, looking good as we move towards Cardiff. And uh, there's no doubt that um, it's a satisfying night's work for him. Of course, he would have loved to have won, but nonetheless, it's worked out very nicely for him. Second place on the night, Martin Vasilek, another very pleased rider great effort from martin he's ridden strongly throughout the night i fancied he might just win it but it wasn't to be yeah there was a point there tonight where he did look like he was more than capable of winning this yeah just a strong performance of him yeah but the semi-final and the final just didn't quite go his way Anders Thompson, clearly overjoyed, rightly so. Just beginning to sink in, winning his first Grand Prix. What a moment for him in front of his home crowd as well here in Gorshaw. That is extra special. He needs no one to tell him to enjoy this moment. He is definitely enjoying it. Indeed he is. So there we are, the first three on the night. Great performance by all three, of course. And um, uh, we will hear the national anthem, I'm sure, but we'll have the trophies first. Gorzhov, uh, president, coming forward here. Wojcicki coming forward here for the third place. Otto 